Good morning and welcome. Let's get the show started. We are doing today tier 200 pits, so we're missing 16 more tiers, but we blasted through 60 yesterday. So we actually went from 120 all the way down to 184. And as soon as we clear to tier 200, we're going to try multiple different necro builds, okay? So right now we're doing the Blight full damage summoner necro with Shadow Blight and 100% attack speed even without Kalen's Edict. Then we're going to try out the Iron Maiden Necro, that's for sure. We're going to go for Bone Spear Bone Mages on a tier 200 as well. And we're going to try the Pure Summoner with Army of the Dead. All of this will be tried in one stream. And la la lastly, while we're playing, we're gathering PTR feedback. So if you have any kind of PTR feedback, Gucci, good to see you there. Howdy, Beats also. <clears throat> if you have any PTR feedback, anything you would like to see on the list, post in and we'll we'll add in to actually make a very nice comprehensive list that we can then go through that that's the overall plan for today i'd say and mm -hmm, this is a good plan so without further ado let's push deeper <clears throat> how do you do we go 182 so we're now 184 q and we're gonna start straight away the thing is, it doesn't actually get much harder. Again, the bosses are getting a slight incremental more HP as it seems. So everything is getting slightly more, more difficult to beat, but it's not getting harder, right? It's not getting like, like, like oh no, we can't beat this anymore. <clears throat> it's truly not like the Abbot 12 Zier. Because the Ever 12 Zier had this issue. Oh, I shouldn't have uh, worked on my sound. So the Ever 12 Zier had that issue where enemies were getting like so much HP boost that you took like five minutes to fight versus a normal opponent. So like like the amount of time you literally were spending killing one was just just off the shards, right? And in comparison to that, like the, the pits are the pits are a joke because things just literally die so easy, which is good because I, I really didn't want another Abba 12 Zier where, where I just spend my time hammering my head like against one single opponent that, that will simply not die. But it, it was interesting and I guess we, I, I don't know, you, you could add pit plus content, I guess, for, for the creators, for the gamers that are really searching for, oh my goodness, I am stuck here. This is bad. See, without blood mist i would have died because they they stuck me in this in the in the goddamn uh <laughs> in the goddamn barrier they just they just stuck me i, I couldn't leave oh that was harsh ow i need more time i don't want to end up in that barrier again it was a very unpleasant feeling by the way, I had someone tell me this morning today, Chad, that if a summoner build does have Corpse Explosion in it, despite Corpse Explosion being one of the best skills to actually make summon stronger, right? But if a summoner build has Corpse Explosion in it, then it's not a summoner build. Are you going to try a Blood Wave build? Uh, we will definitely make a Blood Wave build, but season four is the season of summoner. Um, I'm, and Blood Wave sadly does not have any summoner synergy. Uh, why is season four the season of the summoner it, it literally is i mean everything will be about summoner everything will be around summoner it's it's literally like it's going to be making summoner as strong as possible we, we do know at this point that every season does have a theme that is dictated by blizzard i mean last season it was definitely blood, the season of blood surge right so so the strongest most powerful builds are mostly blood surge uh i don't know what hit me there so the, the strongest most powerful builds were at that point blood surge uh, then in season one, you kind of had like Bone Spear happening. I mean, in, in season eternal, you have Bone Spear happening. Yeah, I mean, Blizzard is pushing a certain agenda, right? They're, they're pushing a certain sort of thing. Uh, then you had the season of the um, um, Bloodlands, right? I mean, Bloodlands got really strong as, as uh, Gork Wills was in there, and Gork Wills was kind of put into the things. And season four is definitely going to be season of the Summoner. I mean, we do hope that from season four on, every season is season of the Summoner, because as much as people like to play without summons it's it's kind of like the reason why necro exists 
right? I mean, if, if summons are not strong on Necro, then, then might as well delete the class and call the Witch Doctor, right? I mean, it, it's cool to have an option to play without summons, but, but yeah. I mean, you're, you're the only class with, with actual meaningful companions, not like a druid who has like companions, but, and, and then, and then they, they, they need to work. They need to be even the most mandatory thing. Like, like, you know, having them should always be beneficial. And that's currently what the game is turning into that, that even if you're playing a bone spear necro, that it's better to have summons than to not have summons, right? That's right now the thing. You want to play a Bone Spear Necro, summons are better. Uh, will minions be weaker to the PDR though? I don't see a reason for that. Because yes, minions are strong. But no, minions are not broken. I mean, yes, minions are getting this done right now. But if you make minions weaker, again, they're going to start dying. So so let's say you would, you would give minions now um, less stats again. That would mean less damage, more minion dying, more tedious, and make them relatively unviable again. So we would go from, like, there's a very small line from them being viable to minions not being viable. And that, that's that's a very tight... Ow, I thought I was out of it. It's a very tight um robe that we're walking on here to, to really say, like, where we at right now right uh what would we say the pit is from one to ten honestly for me the pit is a uh probably eight out of nine experience uh, eight of ten experience right now i am i'm am enjoying the pit i mean i obviously don't enjoy the random one hits because who enjoys random one hits um th then i have seen some people say uh, uh, like you know high, highest pit content should have random one hits because it's the highest content and it should should reasonably have something that kind of stops you as much as I want to agree with that, like, there are other ways doing that than random one hits, right? So that's almost a little killing me. Yikes. So yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I enjoy it, but I can understand people not enjoying it. This is a very important thing to understand. Like, I like this kind of content. Fight against the clock. Try to beat the clock. And if you actually beat the clock, so if you're, if you're faster than the clock, right? then you can advance deeper into the pit right now i had a stupid run this was a bad run i only get plus one correct but if i have a good run i get plus two or plus three levels deeper and that's kind of like what i enjoy about the pin that i personally with the level of my gameplay i determine how fast i beat the end game and that's cool because my my like i can i can beat the end game faster with personal skill I like that. And I get rewarded by that because if I beat the end game faster, I get deeper into the pit and I get more massive working materials. Now let's let's master working materials are obviously irrelevant because I obviously have over 200,000 master working materials. By the way, that was one of these one hits we talked about unavoidable. My, I literally came out of blood mist and the dude is just in front of me and hits me instantly and we instantly die. There's nothing I could have done. Um, yeah, so so like like the, the materials are obviously like a bit lackluster currently because you have all of them and I can masterwork everything. I just don't want to because the animation is annoying. <laughs> right? When I, I have enough masterworking to perfectly masterwork my whole equipment, I'm simply not doing it because the animation is annoying. That, that needs to land in the... Thank you very much. That needs to land in the PDR feedback document, by the way. So it's like greater rifts. I mean, it, it is it is exactly like greater rifts, laser gazer. Only that greater rifts, if I'm not mistaken, always got harder. And here it's kind of like the, the enemy level doesn't raise after two, 199 anymore, but that's a good thing. So the problem currently is if they would have the enemy level race after 199, uh, the game would break. The game is already breaking right now. Okay, very, very important. Like, like the game can essentially not keep up or the, the way how Blizzard set it up with the, with the minus damage reduction that you cannot make your character tanky. It is it's literally impossible to bring your character to a level of tankiness where he don't randomly die. Okay. 
I mean, I may, maybe just as a necromancer, but, but as a necromancer, it's like kind of impossible. So you, you always to a degree, but face like random death moments. And if the pit was getting infinitely harder, so after 199, there's 200 plus opponents. I mean, like, like the system can't already hadn't handled 199 opponents. So where, where, where do you want to go? Like, where, where do you want to end up? Everything dies. There's definitely a better one, but also not good because we died against these random wolves. There's a lot of fire, jeez. Stood a bit too close. Almost get myself burned. Uh, Backpack Battles got a sick patch. I have seen Backpack Battles patch and the game keeps innovating and getting better, which is which is fantastic. I mean, when small indie games keep killing it, that's always, that's always nice to see. And then it's sad to see when AAA title games are not killing it. That being said, Diablo is definitely doing fantastic now. I mean, all in all, I, I will give the whole patch in a 7 to 8 out of 10, currently. Like, I, I know some people think 7 out of 10 is a failure, but in my books, it's actually pretty good. Uh, but it's simply like the, the small things that still need to get fixed and that are able to get fixed, right? That's my, that's my favorite part, where everything that's currently bugged, broken, um, like everything we have that's annoying right now and not perfect, like Veil Crystal cost, um, the one shots and, and some, some of the other things. So all of this is fixable. Like we currently don't have anything where I'm going to say they couldn't, they couldn't stop that, right? We have a couple of bug builds. We have a couple of bug multipliers, a couple of bug interactions. They can all be fixed. Everything, everything that ruins it right now can get fixed. That's great. I mean, that, that's actually great, right? So I don't, I don't think they'll need to postpone season four. I mean, they already postponed season four once, correct? But they should have more than enough time to make sure that season four comes out as a success. Oh, that's Bramble. Bramble is perfect. For some reason, Bramble always summons like really weak, um, really weak echoes. I'm not sure if the echoes are bound to the bosses. Has anyone figured that out? Because Bramble seems to always have this this echo that does the the succubus echo here, right? This, this succubus echo and this succubus echo is really easy to dodge. So I'm, I'm never struggled with that one. Actually, not sure if that's down to. Well, th then we have the, the demon. And burn it down. Okay. Oh, we get one single glove item with a greater affix. Let's see if it's useful. Uh, maximum life. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's a beautiful looking shirt. Thank you very much. I, I'm trying to not wear too many black shirts because I always wear black shirts. What's the plan after PDR? Play a different game until season four? Yes. We're currently waiting for uh, No Rest for the Wicked, and we're going to play some Elden Ring, uh, maybe some Hearthstone Battlegrounds, so so many games in between. Did you see the Helltide specific elixir found? Uh, the Helltide specific elixir is for, that's 1686 of the pit now, uh, is for the seasonal mechanic, as it seems. So that seems to be a season four thing. As it seems. But yes, there is a season four elixir that that makes monsters even stronger. But I think that that is that, that's like for the iron wolf thingy. We we don't know yet. I mean, there again, many many unknowns. I can't wait to finally get season four information. I hope they don't keep us hanging. I mean, they definitely have to make end end of end of April. We need a campfire chat. We need a season four campfire chat that kind of like. Um, wraps everything together. I would also like to have a PTR campfire chat because right now we had the PDR, we gave a lot of feedback and I would kind of like for them to make a campfire chat where they address a lot of the issues because right, we know veiled crystal cost, um, the tempering success chance, like the pit difficulty in general, like, like it would just be nice for them to tell us what their roadmap is, what they have decided on. I mean, obviously they need to internal talk about things first uh, to, before they give external information. 
still though like I, I think we all would like to see this right that they that they kind of give us some intel what's happening because right now we we had the pdr we gave feedback but we obviously don't know like we don't know if they're listening <laughs> if they're trying if there's anything happening uh i mean like i haven't seen actually many of the community managers developers i haven't seen many tweets lately so they seem to be at work um you know often you notice like they're there i mean obviously twitter can be used while you work but but there's a lot of talk in between of seasons and when new seasons get released but there there's awful quiet on social media so i would assume they're all very busy or they got told to not actually to shut their faces online who knows uh but yeah i have i've seen like really very few tweets from, from any diablo 4 devs uh like even private tweets if you know what i mean and and usually some of them are actually rather talkative right so, so i i would assume they're at work no they're actually they're actually doing their job <laughs> surprise not sure if i missed it but would you take on the current state of season four and best class i mean best class is hard to say because uh barbarian is broken and druid is broken right so barbarian and druid is broken right now i think necromancer has the biggest variety again i mean again yes most builds are summoner builds right now but you essentially have the bone summoner you have the blood summoner you have the shadow summoner you have multiple shadow summoners you have the army of the dead you have the mendel you have the no mendel you have the um, you, 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 can, you can play with Excel's Corroded Signet, you can play the full summoner, you can play full full bone, you can play nuclear necro, uh, you can play a full corpse explosion thing, you can even make a, a bone spirit necro, uh, there is a blood wave necro too with desecrated ground, so there, there's like so much! I mean necro again, land of endless possibilities when it just comes down to, I want, I would like to play one or two different builds, no problem, we got it. Is there a planner for this build? There's not only a planner, there's a full YouTube video about. So we, we just uploaded this very morning the full YouTube video that explains the whole build that wraps everything up together. So so not only a planner, like like everything. Full the full shebang. Because that's what we do here. We provide the full shebang. What weapon do you use? Uh currently a one for the lucky hit, but technically a sword for the crit would be better. Uh, because this build actually doesn't need lucky hit. I mean, with doesn't need lucky hit, I still do mean we do actually need lucky hit. But just in comparison to the old Necro build, we are not really that reliant. By the way, that's a four minute clear. That's actually really, really, a really Gucci one right now. Like that. If I don't randomly die to something stupid. Uh, minions, could you move on up? And actually fight the Oh you're so dead. Before we get before we get killed by this. Thank you very much. That's two levels deeper. Appreciation. Uh, not a single greater affix. Wow. No, ring and pans, actually. I like Chan. Oh, what do we have? Pans? And ring. Hmm, sadness. Nothing special. I'm a Necro minion build and I want to try this build, but run out of Veil Crystals. So what you're doing is very simple. You make yourself 20 more characters. So what I did is I made myself a total of how many characters, Chan? 50 characters on the realm, on the test realm, 50 to really have everything. Okay. <laughs> yes, I know it sounds sad that you have to make 50 different characters, but there you go. We had to pull it off. By the way, this is 188 now, then 190 Chan. And in one hour, we should be at the 200 and then we can try out different minion builds. It's going to be hella interesting. So yeah, the, the Veil Crystal thing is a problem because I went I went through over 20,000 Veiled Crystals already. I, I have never owned 20,000 Veiled Crystal on, on, on any of my accounts, right? So so it's kind of like, hmm. I mean, if, I, if I'm literally on the PDR where you can make yourself a Knight Limited 
supply of Veiled Crystals, and we're actually running out of Veiled Crystals on the PDR. Uh, what am I supposed to say? another two minute clear the enemies seem to be rather simple in this one it really it really hardcore depends on what kind of enemies we're facing right how, how quick you go through especially these annoying wolves no, no one likes wolves come on i'm stuck those waller opponents are technically the the most the weakest like kind of kind of specialty in the in the game oh really really a ghost touched me a ghost from a ghost urn touched my booty with one single finger and that made me die you did john this is my this is my demise I, a ghost touched me Oh, jump through the poison. I really don't want to die to the poison. Can you still go back to season three? Oh, the, so season four is only on the test realm. So, so you can play season three and four at the same time. The thing is last day. Today's the very last day of the PTR. But even if you only have one day to try out things, please do so. If you find your time because we need all the feedback possible we need like no, no matter how your feedback is even if your feedback is very badly worded even if you say d4 bad i mean at least at least you did something i mean it's better there's there's tons of people who are simply playing pdr and they actually never tell blizzard anything right i mean some people just use a pdr as a gaming opportunity that's that's not good That's not good because like a PDR is a PDR just like a beta, right? It's not there for you to play the game. I mean, it's there for you to play the game, right? But it's, but it's also please there to give proper feedback. Now you could say I'm not doing unpaid work, but realistically, we all want the game to be good. So please, please, if you if you have things to say, say them, right? Give, give your opinion, share what you think. Uh, to to make the game into something better than than it is right now so that's that's what we end of the day one all of us i think a better game yeah it's not on steam sorry if you if you have steam diablo you're cooked um you got you got robbed uh, the reason it's on battle there is i mean there's a good reason it is on battle.net and that's because blizzard blizzard can just push patches on battle.net like m&ms so so if they need the game updated they can just do it like that right they they don't they don't need to go through steam or through microsoft to to push an update on xbox or something they can literally just be like oh yeah here here's the update could you could you please you know could you please install this thank you very much um and that, that's that's worth a lot because otherwise they essentially constantly have to have to get the approval right have to have to get like the right patch timing down and that kind of oh, that is uber little almost had me that almost turned like so unfortunate could my, my minions are not attacking see the minion ai is smarter but since he's like standing like in a in a weird um position there my minions literally decided that attacking is not a thing because he was standing in a bad position. That is another deathless visage. Oh no, that's a God Slayer crown. Oh. Who would have thought? 
Uh, what's your bone spear build? And love it. Regret not switching sooner. The bone spear build was really fun. This build will rock when you get Shaco. No, it won't. No, it won't. Shaco will be worse for the build than what it is right now. Why will Shaco be worse for the build than it is right now? Very simple. Because my minions don't get stronger from Shaco. My corpse explosion gets better. My corpse tendrils, my blight, my blood mist, and my decrepify. Each of them get better. But my minions don't get stronger. And I would have to put a different affix, some, uh, different aspect somewhere else. Because I can't actually... Um, So, realistically, no. Um, Shaco wouldn't do anything for this build. Actually, general, generally, Shaco is actually terrible right now. Most most uniques or even uber uniques are terrible because they, they simply don't have tempering. And by not having tempering and the skill ranks, uh, yeah. Because right now, a normal helmet can have to can have to up to plus five ranks in a certain skill. For example, for my minion build, I can get five ranks in Skeletal Mage Mastery on a helmet. That's not true. I think I can get up to seven ranks into Skeletal Mage Mastery. Uh, which, with seven ranks in Skeletal Mage Mastery, that's another 140% multiplicative damage for my Skeletal Mages. So, yeah. Sh Shaco cannot do... Shaco cannot do what I need it to do, essentially. Any streamers uber items are terrible i mean there there are still good uber items like the ring of starless skies because the ring of starless skies still provides 40 percent damage multiplier that's an unconditional multiplier just like that so 40 percent unconditional multiplier to your damage um and that works on every damage so so the ring of starless skies is is always going to be good because they just made that item way too good i mean let, let's, let's be real jesus fucking christ um that's like the last uber unique that is unconditionally good I mean, even Grandfather is bad. And the reason why Grandfather is bad is because weapons can have two temperings, right? And the temperings are actually quite insane and can be really made to boost your build by, by a significant mar margin. Um, and having then uber uniques without one tempering. I mean, the, the question is, maybe maybe uniques should have one tempering. I, I, I was thinking about this. I, I, I would like that, personally. Uh, if uniques... Don't get two temperings, but one tempering. That would be kind of cute. Th then again, maybe maybe it's like how it should be. What I what I feel currently is uniques need a buff in their affixes. So what happened is that every item or every item in general, so so they they made the affixes stronger and count more in every item, right? So instead of a t like for, instead of twenty percent vulnerable damage, you get forty percent vulnerable damage right now. The problem is they adapted every single item but they didn't adapt the uniques so they essentially boosted the affixes on everything but on uniques which now means that uniques are falling behind i mean a normal scythe a normal 100 weapon can have like up to plus 80 intelligence right how much intelligence does black river have what do you think chan okay what, what do you think so a normal wand, a normal sword, a normal thing can have 80 intelligence like that. But Black River still has plus 50. Isn't that kind of weird? So, so like they, they clearly, they clearly forgot to give the affix upgrade to uniques intentionally or unintentional maybe maybe this is just what they want right this is this is what they want that uniques are are just like uh have a downside i mean they still have a unique ability but right now they would have a unique downside too uh-huh <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry for that <laughs> yeah they, they have a unique ability and a unique downside now uh maybe that's intentional Like a trade-off like you, you get a you get a cool you get a cool thing like you know the 130 percent corpse explosion shamambo bambo uh but for for getting the 130 percent corpse explosion or for getting that 40 percent multiplier you essentially get the unique downside of not having tempering and master working and and that's that's what they want i should have definitely not 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 warped in there between everyone that was a questionable move. 
Also, I do hate spiders because spiders actually kill my minions. Uh, I'll read your question in a second. Sorry, Chad. Uh, let me let me finish this boss fight because boss fights are actually challenging, right? If you're not paying attention, I can actually die at boss fights. I mean, still, still rather rarely, but it's not impossible. If you're not paying attention, if you're playing bad, there's a world where this guy here, that that butcher dude with the explosion, where he takes me out. And I really don't like that. I mean, if I if I if I'm agile enough, I usually get out of range. Good, that was nice. 192 done. Oh, a shield with two affixes. Cool, cool. It's useless because I don't need shields, but I want to see what it has. So, does Bone Spear get a go off dexterity or strength? Dex. Uh, but Bone Spear actually goes still off int because uh, Dex is just for critical strike damage chance. Yeah, they need to buff. You need to give them temporary options. Exactly. I mean, right now, the best example is Ring of Mandel. The lucky hit chance. So. It's very up and down because the lucky hit chance of every item is lower than the lucky hit chance that every other item has. So right now, currently, my lucky hit chance is only 10% on that. It's laughable. And this is a double masterwork like lucky hit chance. But it has minion life on it. And minion life is useless. I mean, the thorns can stay, but the minion life is useless because minion life just literally doesn't exist anymore as a stat. So, yeah. Hmm. Here, that weapon here. 84. Okay, check yeah, guys. 84 intelligence. Now let's look at my, I know Black River is, where's my Black River? Black River. So Black River has 52 int. Why does Black River have 52 int while a normal wand has 70 int? Explain. Shouldn't Black River also have 84 int? Should, shouldn't it? Correct? I mean, this is a masterwork 12 times Black River. A masterwork 12 times wand is gonna have like 100 int. Weird, right? Blazer. Thank you for the 39 months of support, Blazer. Absolutely appreciate it. That's typical Blizzard not thinking the big picture. So what we have here is four currently reworking unique affixes to uh, meet up with season four standards. And, and we're completely removing replacing certain affixes uh like mendel minion life so that's that's the point i was saying where we're currently like writing everything many blinking numbers on the screen i would turn the numbers off if i wouldn't enjoy the numbers because for me personally uh, the numbers are still giving me the the standard dopamine of actually seeing them um, Like I want to I want to gouge how much damage i'm roughly dealing and I see like here's some millions in between I mean sure there's a lot of numbers due to minions and damage over time But i'm still seeing a couple of millions. Oh god. I almost died from that teleport Couple of millions in between and it makes me happy I like I like to see these These high numbers They give me they give me joy So it kind of gives you like an estimate how much life actually opponents have, right? Jesus, by the way, that spider spit on me from, from a distance and almost murdered me. Frost spiders can be definitely some hella annoying enemies. I mean, especially the frost spiders, right? Because they, they have like some some truly homing missile sh like shebang. Oh, wow. Okay, now, now we are going a little bit too far. Frost spiders, one hit crossbows, everything. I am I am not keen on repeating that experience right now. Let's see if there's a corpse that I can straight up pull in because I I, I am not wanting to have that corpse bow do this to me again. Okay, everything together in one spot. Hermas done. More spiders trying to get me, but we're not getting we're not getting gut gotten, right? By the way, currently I don't see how hardcore players are actually playing the game. I mean, it, like, depending on what class you play, it is it is literally like impossible. Even even if I like 100% focus, right? I 100% pay attention. I 100% do the most tankiest build I can. I will I will die to random one hits. Like no no matter what I do. So I'm kind of like I 
don't know how hardcore players are playing the game right now because if there's no way to avoid random one hits how are you are you gonna play i mean like you literally i guess can't go deeper in the pit base base assumption just at some point stop playing the game <laughs> Which, mu which must be a bit frustrating because if you're playing hardcore, you kind of want to do the hardest content too, but but you can't. So I don't see how. Good morning, Halt. How are you doing? Why not use the army of the dead after you bring up all the minions? Well, if you could tell me which skill to put out for army of the dead, then we can talk about it. So right now we're playing blight for the 20% damage multiplier. Okay. So blight gives me and the minions 20% more damage always. Correct. And if I now would play army of the dead, I would take that away. That always, that would be kind of bad uh, because I would have to play army of the dead instead of blight. Now you could say army of the dead instead of um blood mist but blood mist is literally what keeps me alive because with blood mist in any situation where something comes too close to me in any situation where i'm stuck in elemental damage so whatever happens i could just go into blood mist and say i don't care right so blood mist is the i don't care button blood mist is the i i don't i don't mind any damage done to me button uh, because if i'm in blood mist and i can't be targeted then i can't die right so that can't go away too. The Crepify is needed for even more damage reduction, slow crowd control and uh, cooldown reduction. Cooldown reduction for my um, things to pull together and for my blood mist. So that can also go away. Uh, then Corpse Tendrils pulls everything together and Corpse Explosion gives me uh, the Blighted Aspect and bonus damage multipliers anyways. So there's not a single skill I can remove that would, that would be like Army of the Dead is making this in any way smoother. So yeah, Army of the Dead for this particular build is useless, but for a different kind of build, it's working because this is right now the Shadow Summoner. There is a Bone Summoner though. Okay, so there is a, there's a, no, well, it's, I don't call it the Bone Summoner. So there's the Bone Summoner and there's the Physical Summoner. So the Bone Summoner and the Physical, phys, physical Summoner both have an opportunity to actually play um oh slither i hate you slither they, they have the opportunity to actually play uh, army of the dead but again army of the dead is not like a per se thingy you can just put in okay you gotta you gotta put it in the in the right moment in but not not just a blank this is this is good Oh, my, my, my minions are going crazy. 3 million damage chat. 3, min 3 million damage procs. We're going places. Uh, that is the demon. I gotta look out. Demon could one hit me. Not with me though. Oh, that's her. He <laughs> walking behind. Not with me, Satan. Oh, that's Ulalith. And I really didn't see her coming. Like seriously, how many more are you gonna summon? Holy Christ. I mean, I, I really, I really missed out on that Uber Lilith there. Jeez, Louise. Whew. That was a, that was a rough one. That was a rough one. We get new pens though. Are you happy with your damage output or is there always desire to do more? There is desire to do more, but I don't have it in my hands. So in order to do more damage right now, what would I need to do? I need a helmet with a uh, minion mastery. The problem is I uh, like yeah uh, where where am i supposed to get that from right <laughs> so i'm currently in need of greater affixes to essentially boost what i'm doing what i could do is i have currently lucky hit chance on the helmet for a bit more cooldown reduction but it would actually be fine if i take the helmet put it into the uh enchantment thingy right and currently i want uh skeleton mage mastery so what we could right now do is we could just start rolling but the biggest problem is, like, how likely is it that I'm going to see Skeletal Mage Mastery? That's my complaint right now. Um, I, I think this is a complaint since the beginning of Diablo, that you only see two options. 
I feel like with the with two options, the chance to get what you're looking for is just way too slim. And that's also like a complaint I see very often. Like with re-rolling right now, I see two options, but like seriously, how, how likely is it with two options to see the option you want? So I guess in like my humble opinion would be going going for three options just to make re-rolling less of an annoying experience because you, you notice how, how sad this actually is, right? I mean, I, I, I could spend doing this now like another 400 times and I'll never see Skeletal Mage, Mage Mastery, right? When I'm burning through my resources, that was 400 Veiled Crystals right now. Yes, 400 Veiled Crystals. And and the thing is, right, you need Veiled Crystals for any for everything. So Veiled Crystals for Master Working, Veiled Crystal for Rerolling, Veiled Crystal for Tempering, uh, Veiled Crystal for Enchanting. Is uh, temerity absolutely necessary? I do not think that temerity is absolutely necessary. Uh, and T-Bolt's will would only give you 20% damage. So since they nerfed T-Bolt's will from 40 to 20%, I'd rather take a little bit more safety with temerity over the bonus damage. Because a measly 20% damage multiplier is, is not bad. Like, don't get me wrong. It's, it's an unconditional 20% damage multiplier. Uh, but you don't need the essence it provides. So, so the main reason you actually use T-Ball's will was, was for the essence providing thingy, right? And I am not lacking in the essence department. I always have enough essence. So I don't see where the 20% damage multiplier of T-Ball's will would be much better than the chance to avoid a potential damage. Because yes, Temerity is like, like if something kills me, it's going to be a one hit. But Temerity helps a lot with the random elemental damages because sometimes you are standing in the frost. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> sometimes you are standing in the poison and so on. And Temerity just creates these moments where if I'm standing in that frost, in that poison, even for a second, that I would not randomly die. My minions are not attacking. That's a bit stupid. And that that is that is quite important and not to be underestimated uh, how many times I literally just survived by a hair breath because I'm, I'm getting the amount of bonus um, area. Uh, not not to be forgotten, like see that teleport, for example, from that dude that you can't really avoid. Um, that's where Temerity saves you. Uh, but also Temerity is currently a low roll. So my, my Temerity is a 48% Temerity. There's actually an 80% Temerity out of there. And the 80% Temerity, for example, will actually prevent one hits. Because right now I'm, I'm getting like here, this is 22,000, uh, the, the 20,000, fortify, the fortify. So my, my barrier is currently with the amount of life I have only at like 10,000. Um, but it could be up to like 80% of your life, right? And if my life was up to 30,000, which I actually do want to have, then I'll be having 30,000 life and I have no opportunity to die anymore. So that's, that's actually really cool. So you could, you could. You could essentially prevent the one hits, I think, to to a uh, to a big degree. I mean, not the one hit from the bosses, because like the the random random boss damage you're taking, like from the boss echoes, you get hit by that, you die. Rightfully though, so I, I don't think the boss echo one hit damage should be reduced because. I mean, maybe I'm saying this is a necro, but but that's like the challenge of the pit, right? That you see these red echoes, you avoid them, and you don't take damage. So so that is something they see here. Like, do you see right now the pillars? The electric pillars would have killed me if I didn't have like that little bit of bonus barrier happening to avoid like one one pillar damage. And that's where, I, like, again here, I took damage also from the standard minions and temerity safety. So it's kind of like there's many situations where temerity just really provides that little bit extra that 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 just takes death away certain death from the door uh, as well this energy enchantment here right now i mean we, we all know you can't block the energy enchantment like the that that electricity enchantment is just bullshit. but but the electricity enchantment won't kill you anymore because yes i, I will take random electricity enchantment damage um but it, it won't it won't just here like these right these random balls but due to temerity like consistently barriering me I, i'm just at a at a level of safety um 
I hope that makes sense to you. Yes, you could take. Yes, you could get more damage. But what does what does more damage help you when when you die? Right? <laughs> what, does, what does more damage help you when when you die? Because if you're dead, you're dead. Surprise. Right? And and dead people can't do damage. Which actually gives more barrier temerity or a bone storm bone storm because it's a 100 barrier to life but you need to play bone storm so the problem with bone storm is that well you need to play bone storm and it's only barrier active while you have bone storm so if bone storm is not active no barrier and the thing about temerity right now is that temerity happens always so if i overheal which i do consistently and constantly so if i overheal i do get temerity Right, and that, that's actually plenty good. Because, well, I do consistently, all the time, overheal. At any given point. What are you going for right now? Oh, that's the wind thingy. Wind thingy almost scared me. Oh, you're, you're st Wait, what? How far does the wind thingy go out? To touch me. I so this this is like wrapped up why temerity is actually good. I mean, you saw temerity did not save me from the one hit there, because it, it just simply can't yet due to due to not being a 100% temerity or an 80% temerity. That being said, we could argue about a temerity rework to make temerity go up to 100% as well. Okay, so these wind thingies go actually all the way out until they explode. I didn't know that. I feel a little bit stupid now. I mean, I thought they're they're like exploding in the middle and that's about it. But no, they're actually wandering out. Oh. Go away from me. Go away from me, wind thingies. Touch my minions. Okay, any master worked items? Nope, not a single... Uh, not a single super affix item. I mean, we could we could look at every helmet, right? So now see if they have Mage Mastery on them. This is literally what I do. Mage Mastery, Mage Mastery, Mage Mastery, Mage Mastery. Uh, Blood Mist. Blood Mist 3 ranks is actually not bad. Uh, Mage Mastery. And that, that's Blood Moon Breaches, but we don't need it. Mage Mastery, Mage Mastery. So not non item actually has Mage Mastery, so I don't care. Why aren't you using your golem? Good question. Answer is first and foremost, the 30% damage reduction is a joke and doesn't help. So I've tried the golem now multiple times and temerity helps you more than the 30% damage reduction. Okay, step one. Step two, um, if I play golem, I'm missing out on 30% multiplicative damage. That 30% critical strike damage multiplier is applying to my minions and me. So also bullshit. Um, what I would like to see is that this 30% bonus critical strike damage is actually active if I have a golem, because right now, Skeletal Mages gives you 15% bonus damage. Uh, what do I want to take? Attack speed. I wanted to take the armor elixir. Yeah. Armor elixir is actually perfect for me because it's more armor, but not only more armor, it's also more thorns and more thorns is more damage, right? Looking forward to actually play decent summoner, Kobe, and you can play multiple. You can play multiple decent fun thumbnails and enjoy yourself, which is my favorite part right now. Shadow Summoner, Bone Summoner, Blood Summoner. There's even a, um, there will be a Blood Land Summoner that I want to try out because there's a reality where with summoners and corpse consumption into blood orbs, you could actually create a very interesting board uh, where where your bone mages are consistently being healed. 
because like usually your bone mages would die correct because your bone mages are using their life force to attack but imagine you're using bloodlands to overpower and then you're like consistently healing your minions essentially with the blood orbs that you're consuming with work wills that could actually work to a degree not entirely sure how, how feasible it is because sadly you would be missing out on the bone mages actually doing the double the double cool cast right because usually you want the bone mages then to cast bone spears as well and technically we could do a double a double core skill build where we actually don't use our one core skill and it's just sitting in our skill bar anyway. that's future music and then you, then we're thinking about a blood blood wave um blood wave summoner too but that's more for the yolos of actually using blood wave but not completely because blood wave desecrated ground gives us more shadow damage and i'm not sure if that applies to our minions too if they're standing in the desecrated ground off the blood wave they would do more damage and the reapers could give us more cooldown reduction i mean we, we could essentially create a build we could create a build with with the new yen's boots maybe where we have a permanent blood wave going on and imagine this chat for a second like you could use blood wave always Would that be funny just going around and blood waving everything you know 100 blood wave cooldown and destroy things left right and center Could that be it and i still haven't understood the new boots completely that's that's my problem i still haven't understood the new boots completely um i need to look at them and what they essentially do and how they cool down reduce because I, 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 I yeah maybe maybe so, well, has one of you tried the new boots already out yeah yen's boots can trigger ultimate see that that's my that's my thought there so it could be interesting to use Yen's boots with with Blood Wave or with uh, Army of the Dead. I will I will have to revise them, revisit them, and see if I could have them actually trigger my Army of the Dead for me. I almost died there. That's why I need Blood Mist. See again, I'm using Blood Mist over Golem, but but again, again and again and again, we're coming back to the point where. If I hadn't had blood mist in a situation, I would have died. If I hadn't had blood mist in a situation, I would have died. And the thing is that the like, if I had golem in that situation, yes, I would have become unstoppable. I would have still died. <laughs> so, so it's it's like the problem where yes, golem provides you unstoppable, but unstoppable is not equal to the value of a blood mist making you not only unstoppable, making you completely untargetable, right? When I'm not only unstoppable, I am, I am unstoppable, right? I can't be touched, can't be phased, can't be looked at. No one can do anything to me. And I can even go full into the elemental shebang, right? And they can't do anything to me. And this is also very good for army of the den because you can essentially blood mist into your opponents to reduce the cooldown of army of the den oh no not him oh yikes I'm not ready yet. I'm low. that's ban absolutely dislike that fire thingy because the fire orbs they they behave so weird and then they explode and my most hated speciality all the specialities right now Generally, generally big dislike on the seething, uh, on the seething hive master, right? Uh, I didn't see what was summoned there. Oh, it was the wind. Dust in the wind. Oh, that's Lilith. That's Lilith. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Should be standing good. Now this fight is taking a while. Uh, wait, was that another? No, that was the wind. Jesus. Okay. Holy balls. That was an annoying one. Uh, we get another gloves with uh, one greater affix at least. What do we have? Gloves with... Wait, where's my gloves with the greater affix? 
Oh, here, maximum life. Okay. That's it. Nothing interesting. Hmm. Sadness. What PDR ends tonight? I mean, so it ends on the ninth, but it's America. So I would say, like, it's going to be live until tomorrow. Correct? So we, we should be we should be relatively good for a while still, right? Would be nice if you could build your golem using legendary items and bring it to life. I mean, like, so so we always come 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 uh we always complain about wait, so we always complain about barbarian having four aspects, right? But what if, as you say, you could give the golem one or two items? Like the golem can have a chest and a helmet and these items can have aspects or the golems can have can have gloves and and a weapon anything right but you could give the golem an item maybe even one item only and one aspect and that item and aspect would work for you that would be great that would make golem so much more viable i mean if the golem could carry an item that item could have an aspect insane you could even give him a unique right so any item that goes into the bo body of the golem would empower it that would be cool maybe too good so what do Yen's boots exactly do? Casting a skill has a 30% chance to cast a non-mobility, non-ultimate skill that is currently on cooldown. This effect can only occur every 12 seconds, but, but why would you use that? I mean, so, so Yen's boots could actually cast Blood Mist, could cast Corpse Tendrils, but that's in. I still don't see why you would ever use this right now. What to do after level 100 in Season 3? Well, after you get level 100 in Season 3, you can try to clear a Tier 100 Dungeon, Uber Lilith, Tier 100 Vault. Um, and if you technically have done all of these things, then you're you're done with the game. I mean, you can try to kill Uber Malphys too. Uh, that can be a challenge at times. Uh, but again, as soon as you have done these things, unless you're interested in grinding up, uh, you're done with the game, then you could still engage into the leaderboard. Again, if you're interested in the leaderboard kind of content, uh, but, but yeah. Then you're done. Oh, you finished the seasonal journey because finishing the seasonal journey gives you a title. And it's actually fun to finish the seasonal journey. I mean, for me, for me personally, I want to finish the seasonal journey every season. Uh, because it's kind of, it's kind of fun to beat it. And, and also to find ways to beat it easy because the seasonal journey is a uh, different difficult, right? So there, there's some... There's some some things in the seasonal journey that are really really hard to do. There's some things in the seasonal journey that are relatively easy to do. Um, like like especially the the final one is often about like you you could kill Uber Lilith, but I often even don't bother with that because killing Uber Lilith is more more of a hassle than fun because she's just annoying. I mean she's not hard, she's just annoying. Especially her fireball face. They altered her fireball face though, chat. Uber Lilith is easier than ever. I mean, if you have a certain amount of movement speed and if you're not completely blind and you're actually like even if you're playing a necromancer who doesn't have a single movement ability yes we have blood mist but high cooldown blah so so we don't really have cool movement abilities even for necros right now it has gotten vastly easier which is actually kind of cool because it used to be really hard for necros we, we suffered chad no movement speed ability gang gang A glyph to level 15, don't you only have to get like one single glyph to 15? I mean, that's really fast. If you do like tier 80 dungeons, uh, that's like four dungeons or so, and a glyph is 15. It's actually like like the, the tedious one is getting a glyph to 21. Uh, getting a glyph to 15 is super simple. By the way, chat, technically only two more dungeons and we're at 200. Uh, PDR the current version. What do you mean PDR the current version? Of, of what do what you have to do? Like, like the, the game in the PDR actually has more things to do. I mean, this was a current game question, season three question stuff, but you, you need to press the size. Um, they need to make the Desecration Glyph work for both Blood and Shadow. Yes, I kind of feel like Desecration Glyph is a bit sad right now because the only desecrated ground we're having is um, Blood Wave turned into, turned into Shadow. It's kind of like the only desecration we have. 
and that feels a bit sad because I, I want desecrated ground to be a thing especially why why is the only real cool desecrated ground damage like a, a blood skill turned into a shadow skill that seems a bit silly <laughs> right Sean why is the only desecrated ground we're having for real I mean the only mattering desecrated ground we turn a blood skill into a shadow skill This seemed a bit silly if you think about it. Oh my goodness, that was so much damage. See, like right now we died because we didn't pay enough attention. But if you actually look at it, um, we could have almost survived with Temerity. You know, coming back to the question of is Temerity really needed? Uh, yeah, my Temerity would have would have like almost kept me alive there three times over. Oh, you you just you just killed me for nothing. Thank you, appreciate it. Necro was the number one Lilith carry until they destroyed the crit multiplier. Uh, your, your understanding one thing wrong here. Necro used to be the number one Lilith killer before they actually made Lilith not be able, not be skippable anymore. Now the Lilith blood wave phase is not skippable. So that means you always actually have to go through her, um, through her blood balls and necro is just historically bad at dodging these blood balls because we have no movement speed ability i mean you know as a as a rogue for example you can flit over the whole screen with one ability where as a necro like you literally have to walk double dash and blood miss oh shit bramble i did not expect you to puke on me that was really bad for me now like you don't have anything where you can dash over half the screen or teleport over half the screen Brian. I'm low in essence. I'm not ready yet. This pain is never understood, Chan. Oh, that wall. Can you believe that it took me super long to to understand that that wall actually explodes? It's a bit sad. Oh man. Walked out of that, walked out of this. And right now I'm gonna keep my thingy for when Lilith comes because I don't wanna die to Lilith again, right? If you lose, I win, I'm better. And that's actually now three more to get to 200. Almost there. Yeah, we're almost there, come on now. Do you know if there's a new class coming? There is not a new class coming. The new class is reserved for the expansion. They are currently fixing the game and they're trying to balance everything. I mean, they, they are barely able to make the current classes work. The current classes have so many issues, so many things that are not working, so many things that need to be reworked right now with the um, new season, right? That... And like all the uniques that have to be reworked and everything i mean a new class would mean uh new abilities new uniques um right it would have to be balanced towards all the content that's existing and the content that's existing right now ain't balanced in itself so so yeah i mean the necro like they they just barely managed in season four right now to actually make minions work and yes minions are working right now but minions are not still not working because there's a lot of aspects affixes and um paragon nodes that still don't make sense so despite making minions work uh there, there's still a lot to do there there's there's not even remotely the question if if a new class could come a new class would at this point like if blizzard actually decides to release a new class right now it would be a band-aid solution to kind of cover up the things that don't work right so you bring out something new and shiny and you're like ha look at it new and shiny forget about all the problems because new and shiny that would literally be what a new class does right now right 
And to, to wrap this up right now, not, not only it wouldn't be a Band-Aid, uh, you would essentially release a new class on a game that's right now at the cusp of actually being fixed. Okay, so so we are we are right now in a very critical moment with tempering and master working and so on, plus the pin, where we could get Diablo in a state of saved, right? Diablo is fixed. Things are things are looking good. And you kind of want to release a new class when the game is doing good and not when it's doing bad, right? Because if, if the game is doing good and we're releasing a good class, a new class, everything is like, wow, this is great. But if things are going bad and they're not fixed and you're releasing a new class, it's just like, wow, this is desperate, right? As a, as a desperate catch for attention, desperate catch for players by releasing a new class. Whereas again, if, if you do it in a in a working game where your cool mechanics are cool mechanics and you have cool end game and everything, then you're and then it's actually a good thing, right? And everyone is excited. Because we want everyone excited. What values are looking for in the book for the season? What, what do you mean what values? Which book? Paragon? Book of the Dead? Herm, please, please, please press the size of your question. I need more time. And at the end, you invest death resources to make the game better and bring new classes doesn't make the game better. Yes. I mean, so Blizzard is obviously a big developer team. So we're going to we're going to be real about this one, correct? So I asked the question yesterday because I'm not sure, but who's actually making the expansion? Because obviously right now, as we're talking, there is an expansion being worked on, so Vessel of Hatred, and there is there is resources allocated to that. But but like which developer team is working on this right now? Is the the overall Diablo team is working on it? Is it the balancing team? Is it the is it the new expansion team? So do they have a complete team for the new expansion? I mean Blizzard is end of the day still a AAA developer, right? With with quite some resources. I mean, we know they have a season, they have a even season and an odd season team, as it seems. So, so they have a team that's working on the season five already, as we are actually talking about season four, right? So, so you have the season three team that's working on season five. You have the season four team that's working on season and so on, right? Um, so you like you have these, you have you have that. That's what's going on, right? Uh, but but do they also have like a uh, like uh, an expansion team. I mean, that's the assumption. But is that assumption correct? I mean, I, I dearly hope so because, because like right now, like it would be great if as we are talking, a team is already working on the expansion. Right? And that team hopefully is learning from everything that we're doing in the current season to make the current game work, right? Because, because like the expansion has to obviously work with tempering and master working too, correct? Because that, that's like the hard question right now. So season four changes the tempering, the master working and everything. So we're getting all these features, but that means that the expansion and everything that's being developed in the expansion and the, the new class that's coming, the new class needs to have also tempering and master working work work, right? So can, can the expansion even be, I mean, sure the expansion can be made, right? So, but, but everything in the expansion needs to put that into the equation too. What's your favorite class after Necro? Uh, it's a different Necro spec than I'm playing right now. And then after, after all the different Necro specs that I'm playing, uh, there is maybe Sorg or Druid, but it's more like playing playing for different YouTube videos than actually playing because I think they're truly all amazing and the rage. But I, I actually do only like Necro in Diablo. That has been for, I mean, that's not true in Diablo 3. I did like the, the Monk too and the Paladin was kind of fun, but it boils down to, I'm, oh wow, Jesus, I hate you. I'm actually a true necromancer enjoyer. Also, Jesus Christ, she, she nuked me, Chan. She nuked me. 
How about making mages cast basic uh, skill from tree? I mean, there's many things that could be done at this point. Uh, like, like uh, I, I'm still, I'm still would be in favor of actually removing the aspect for more skeletons and putting this on the, um, putting this on the key passive. Okay, because right now, correct, we're we're playing a minion build, but in order to get more skeletons, we need to use an aspect. But technically, there is a minion key passive. Shouldn't shouldn't the minion key passive technically be giving us more minions? Because technically, that's what you have your minions for. Uh oh, Uber Lilith. This is, this is too much. Too many boss summons. Kill her. Thank you very much. I hope there's not a random Uber Lilith coming. It's like the worst part when you're actually playing the game and, and you're like done with a boss fight and then random Uber Lilith. Okay, Temerity, please. Stop giving me T-Bald's wields. Stop. Question about T-Bald's will right now. Correct. It gives you 11 maximum resource, guys. A normal, a normal pants with max resource is already at 20. And a normal pants with bonus damage is at 30% bonus damage. So is T-Bald's will now not working? You can only get Holocon Crest above a certain level of... Uh, Uber uniques in the season three drop from level 85 on 85 opponents and on the test server it's from level 55 opponents on that has nothing to do with xbox or anything uh it is a general thing in the game that uniques drop always uber uniques only drop from a certain minion level on right Is there no way to die less? No, not right now. I, I like, so the only way to die less for me is getting a perfect roll temerity and uh, having having gems in my whole gear. That allows or would allow me to avoid some of the one hits, but no, uh, the one hits at the bosses are intended. And I think it's okay because let's be fair, the, again, these, these kind of boss damages are avoidable. At, I don't know how other classes are faring. I'm honest with you. I have no clue. But they are avoidable, and that's where the skill comes in, right? So that's that's why the pit is fun for me, actually. Uh, that being said, like the the boss one hits are arcane. That that random one hit here was right now. I I get killed by an elemental stun one hit or something. I, I don't even know what killed me, right? It looked like that the that the snake killed me with with elemental damage one hit. Um, that's always questionable because again, I'm fully elemental out. I'm fully damage reduction out, right? I have, I have like at least 80% damage reduction running as much damage reduction as I can. So you would technically assume that I shouldn't die to an elemental one hit there, but the game disagrees. Right? So these are, these are one hits that are, that are weird. And, um, since we don't have a damage lock or a combat lock in any way, it's hard to kind of see why you died. And that's that's actually it's an existing problem because right now you you literally don't understand why did you die? I mean, I, I know we have been asking for this for a while now, but a combat lock would go a long way. A combat lock would go a long way in understanding the game. Because if the game would now tell me you died due to elemental damage overload, I'm like, okay, sure, I can't change that. It's impossible for me to actually avoid dying there because, you know, my, my elemental is max. But I would at least know, right? So, so but, but if the game would tell me I died because I don't have enough armor, despite having 17,000, uh, that would be good because I could work on this, right? I could get more armor. This is something I could actively improve. Um, and that's missing currently. Because surprisingly or unsurprisingly, I like to actively improve in the game, right? I like to get better. If I can't get better, because I'm lacking lacking the information, that's a bummer. That that shouldn't be a bummer. So I'm probably gonna write that on my PDR feedback list. Because 
so let's be let's be real on this one technically i think technically from a tech, tech technology standpoint it shouldn't be hard to put a combat lock in the game because i mean all the combat logging is happening right i mean while i'm playing here right now in the background the game is the game is having all the numbers i mean the numbers exist in the game the essentially you just have to make them visible right i mean my damage numbers are there the enemy damage numbers are there my life is there so you just have to somewhere have a console where all of this is gathered up together And the only reason I can think about not having a combat lock is because their calculations are so fucking stupid that they don't want us to see them. <laughs> I mean, there, there's, there's like, there, there's only one single thing I can think about is, and that, that's that their damage calculations don't make sense. I wouldn't call it laziness, but, but it, it's more like, <clears throat> what, what are you, what are you trying to hide, <clears throat> Ryan? Because if we don't get something as simple as a comet lock, I mean, what are you what are you trying to hide from us, right? Well, what are you trying to conceal? Because technically, a comet lock is something that almost most Blizzard games have, right? I mean, we we, are, we have World of Warcraft, which has a very extensive combat lock. It, I mean, it's it like I mean, I know the World of Warcraft devs are not the Diablo devs, but you literally have to just go over to the other offices and you just gotta ask the guy who made the combat lock, and you get it. Like he could come over to the offices and you you could give him a kiss on the lips and and say like you know here you go, and then and then he makes you he makes you a combat lock. <sighs> Unless the game is so shoddy coded that that's impossible. Um, how do you like the item changes? Is it worth coming back? <coughs> so let me wrap it together. Item changes are great. Uh, items have three affixes now. So let's say I would look for a new item. Okay. I look at this item, three affixes, this item, three affixes. So it's so easy to go over because all the affixes are useful now. So this is like in the attack speed damage over time. Intelligence, attack speed, maximum life. Really good, actually. Like really fucking good, really fucking good item. Could actually be better than what i have here right now if i could roll this into um critical strike damage because this is right now attack speed critical strike damage and damage but like obviously the attack speed here is a very good roll um then again gloves also three three affixes three affixes and this is four ranks and reap that's so useless <laughs> so yeah it's so easy to look at items at this point and kind of see like how how much better are they and especially this is a double greater affix item so what I would do right now is I would take the maximum life and I would technically try to reroll this into critical strike damage. But 45% is a good value. Now I would take the item and to go over the item changes even more, right? I would take the item and I would uh, temper it. Uh, the tempering here right now is my summoning tempering. That would give me more Willem damage. That's useless. Summoning damage. Mm, I want the mage damage, but we'll be content with summoning damage right now. And then I go for the summoning augment and I could have my skeletal mages. Uh, that's attack speed. I don't want this. I want my mages to attack twice. It's attack speed. That's useless. A few more tempers. That's minion attack speed. That's useless. That's skeletal priest buff duration, which is useless as well. And that is your chance for skeletal mages to cast twice. So we get this now. Problem is this all cost me veiled crystals, correct? And now, now we would temp, uh, now we would masterwork this. So this is the final step. After everything, we would masterwork this. The masterworking increases the uh, value of all affixes by five, and then the final one is twenty-five. So we're getting finally this. That's a twenty-five percent increase, and it's going for the summoning damage. Not bad. And we keep masterworking it, right? Five percent, five percent, and it actually does everything five percent. So also the tempered affixes. Problem is this can fail, which is stupid because this failing is a fucking joke. Now we get the attack speed tempered too. It's actually really nice, but not what I want. I want I want technically the skeletal mage chance to be tempered, right? Because I want my skeletal mages to cast twice to, for that to be um, masterworked. And now I would have to reset the masterwork to actually get this. Here, uh, we can five. 
master working animation needs to be way way faster because right now I'm, I'm quickly trying to master work this right to continue playing and look at this i press skip i press skip and it's 21 22 23 24 almost 25 so it's like five seconds i have to wait now five seconds is not a lot of time but still five seconds i have to wait okay so this is master work in attack speed and summoning damage and now i would have to reset this i would have to reset this chan because it's not good it's not a good masterwork. It's not the masterwork I was looking for. Yet, I'm not going to do it because it takes so much time and it's so annoying and it takes so many resources. It actually doesn't even take the resources that, like, it doesn't even take the tempering resources, right? It takes more veiled crystals. How can this be? So understand, Chad, how can this be? How can the masterworking take more veiled crystal than the actual masterworking resource? I'm farming the pit for master working resource. I'm trying, I'm trying to get everything together, correct? But I'm running out of veiled crystals. I'm not running out of neath iron, up the side or ingolith. I'm I'm running out of veiled crystals. What? How can that be? Does master working add some new fun stuff to summons, Cairo? Uh, not master working, but uh, tempering. So with the tempering, you can do things. You can do minion attack speed, mage damage, priest effectiveness, right? Uh, we can have bone spirit be better. Uh, we can have our uh, blight chance to be cast twice, for example, that kind of thing. Uh, then you have the other uh, summoning is uh, summoning damage, mage damage, and golem damage. So you can do the golem, golem. Um, you can do the golem necro you can do the mage necro and you can do the general summon necro plus you can actually increase the damage of your iron maiden which is really interesting because you've increased iron maiden damage and you fully boost iron maiden and you're actually playing minions and your minions are getting attacked then that counts as well so right now this would be my weapon and we had to restart the game because i couldn't enchant there's a uh win six bug where you can't enchant master work temper and have to restart the game it's like an existing bug right now so i had to restart the game because i couldn't master work temper anything anymore and we put the blighted aspect on and we can put a gem on but the thing is if your master work or temper goes through uh, after your master work and temper went through you can actually reset this and redo this. So if you don't like the stats that went for, I could just do this another time. Okay, tier 200, ladies and gentlemen, are we ready to rumble? They didn't acknowledge the crystal problem. Uh, the crystal problem, like if they don't fix this, it literally shows them being tone deaf. I mean, like, right, this is this is one of these changes that would show how they are trying to increase the game retention without actually making good gameplay. Because technically the veiled crystal issue is a retention is a retention thing. So I run out of veiled crystals. And the thing I would do, oh god, right now, why is the camera breaking so much? Couldn't break so much. So I, I run out of veiled crystals. Sorry, this is gonna be fixed in a second, Chan. Was the computer going a bit weird? Camera overheating that was just like I, I started another um, OBS on the side because I need to start my recording OBS to actually record that tier 200. And it decided that it was a fun time to actually break. So again, uh, if we are, if we're spending time farming Veil Crystals, we're spending more time in the game. Uh, more time in the game is, is good in Blizzard's eyes, right? Again, retention based shamambo bambo and but more more time in the game wouldn't be wouldn't be making the game better right it's, it's like this conundrum where it's it's like more time in the game is good but more time in the game is only good if it's more good time spent in the game
Oh, I hate you right now. If it's more good time spent in the game and not just more time spent in the game, right? <laughs> It's like ma making something harder and more annoying to achieve doesn't make it good. It just doesn't make it more harder and annoying to achieve. And that that that's then the problem, right? Weird. Okay, let me see if he's actually doing this or if he's going to break now. Computer's behaving weird right now. What do you think about season four? Well, we don't know anything about season four yet. Right? I mean, what we know is uh, the master working, the tempering and all these things, which actually makes sense, which should be a thing. But we don't know anything about... Um... Oh, you absolutely stupid scumbag. For you. Okay. So we don't know anything about actual season four how is season four going to be how is season four going to play what is the seasonal theme right these kind of things we don't actually know that so what we're going to do right now is we're going to do like two 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 three two hundreds with this summoner and then we're going to go and we're going to play the other summoner as well because my, my goal was today to play summoner number one. Summoner number one is actually the um, shadow summoner. And then we're going to be swapping over to the full summoner. Which is two, two, like two sides of the same coin. But the one is actually playing army of the dead where the other one is playing blight. And they're, they're, they're just a bit, a bit different fun concepts. Ladies and gentlemen, tier 200 pit. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it on the test server, but here we go. That's my argument with having Master Ring Timber Ninja. I don't have a problem. It's just costs me, but banging my head against RNG wall is not fun. Uh, is is not fun to me. I mean, temper, tempering and master working RNG is fine because it's just a chance to break an item and that's okay. But again, um, like it can't be down to veiled crystals. Like you can't, you can't make the main mechanic of the game be like if temporary master working is ultra grindy in terms of another, like we already have a grind to essentially do the pin to get the materials. But if I have to do another grind to get another set of materials for the master working and tempering, that's just stupid. I mean, I'm already grinding one material to actually do master working and tempering. And now you're telling me I need to grind a second material that's going to be running out. Uh, no. It's like the whole fiend rose thing again, right? Where essentially in order to to re-roll or to to do something to your items, you need to not only farm all the resources, no, you also need to spend a significant time then in in hell tides so you're you're able to do one of the basic things in the game. I need more time. Right? Master working and tempering is meant to be the main fun mechanic, and that means the main fun mechanic needs to be relatively easy accessible and not gate cap. But this is why I would like to see a campfire chat, right? A campfire chat that kind of wraps together what changes they are trying to do. Because, because right now you're you're always looking for their responses in the PDR forum. But if you're looking for their response in the PDR forum, you essentially have to scrounge like through every single post and you get to see if there's a blue post there and if they actually said something, right? Um, I, I'd rather have like all, all the responses they have given in the PDR forum and all these responses kind of like gathered in, in one campfire chat or in one post uh, where, where, they, where they tell us, yep, these are, we, we heard you on these issues and we're planning to to do this and that I'm not ready yet. if they do already know what they're planning to do oh ow i died yikes two deathies in a 200 already chat 
rip my hardcore character that I'll never make because hardcore is stupid. At least hardcore is finally hardcore though, Chan. You know, at least I can finally respect hardcore players because the cheat death elixir is gone. In case you missed it, hardcore has become truly hardcore now. Because players can't hide themselves anymore behind a cheat death elixir. No. If you die, you die. Which is kind of funny to me that a bunch of hardcore players actually whined about that. No, I've, I've, I've literally I've literally seen this now in, in the forums so many times. Like, uh, uh, why do you take away my elixir to cheat death in the hardcore game mode? Where because you know I'm I'm a hardcore player and, and, and like 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 you take my ability to cheat death away. That's unfair. I'm like, maybe, maybe I don't understand hardcore players, right? Chat, chat, maybe, maybe I simply do not understand hardcore players enough. You know, make an educated guess why, why it's bad that your cheat death elixir is gone. This seemed like a good thing to me. Maybe I'm an uneducated swine. There's always an option. Oh, no, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, the tier 200 pit has fallen with summons. Oh. Was a bit, bit unceremoniously. And now you would assume that a tier 200 pit would at least drop like cool items, right? <laughs> Um, I mean, because this is a tier 200 pit, right? So I would assume that a tier 200 pit should always drop a unique item. That a tier 200 pit should give me always a greater affix item. Right? I mean, I, th that was that was a tier 200 pit. Zero greater affix item. Zero unique. Nothing. But why? Why am I doing this? I'm obviously the <clears throat> the only reason we're doing this is because we get a gigantic genitalia and we need to show the internet how big our genitalia is right Spe speedy thank you for your donation that's very appreciated very kind of you for putting down so much money for this achievement thank you soon but yeah like like seriously i'm i'm where, where is it where is my where's my reward now for clearing a tier 200 right Maybe I'm maybe I'm too simple and I shouldn't just expect anything. But I didn't even get a cookie, right? But yeah, th this is what I said about a carrot and a stick missing for for higher pits, right? So so there's there's no incentive. I mean, not everything needs an incentive. Okay, well, let's let's be fair. We're in a society where we like incentives right now. Technically, not everything needs an incentive. But, but if you have zero incentive, it feels like the game is wasting my time, right? So I took all these efforts into my hand to, to grind to this spot. I, I made this work, right? I got all the way up and what I got is not even better loot. I mean, this is an ARPG, right? In an ARPG, you take on challenges to, to technically get rewarded in forms of loot. But if the technical hardest content in the game doesn't actually provide more loot then i feel like the game just wasted my time and this is never a good feeling to reach in any game right if, <clears throat> if your time is not being oh god jesus your time is not being valued in any capacity that feels bad Time is even disrespected. 
By the way, these opponents here are vastly easier to kill right now. Ow, I set this and have a double course bow that almost one hits me. Oh, Jesus. These opponents are vastly easier to kill. Pony, pony eats two, two one hits in a row, almost. I never said anything, Jesus. Please don't punish me. Didn't mean it. The game is super hard. This is a super hard dungeon right now. Yeah, very hard. Maximum, maximum difficulty. This is very hard, yes. Don't you, don't you dare one hitting me again. Play D2? No, I don't want to play D2, thank you. I mean, there's a reason I play D4 because I actually like D4. But again, I, I want D4 to be better than it is right now, right? I know often when you often when you complain about things in a game people are like but it used to be like this in d2 but it used to be like this in d4 and you're like yeah but but like you know like i don't care what it used to be like in other diablo iterations we're we're playing diablo 4 right now and you know i if, if i would like to play a game that used to be like another game then i would play that set game right i would go and just play diablo diablo 3 two you know instead of playing diablo 4 but i i want to play diablo 4. Woo! artillery shrine oh no this is actually kind of scam now i'm not i'm this scam that was kind of scam <laughs> oh that doesn't count chat that doesn't count he just died way too simple okay so one thing that was suggested is that every 50 levels of the pit would give you a uh spark and I kind of like this because if I dive 200 levels deep into the spark, I uh, in, into the pin, I would get four sparks and we get an uber unique. And considering that uber uniques are useless right now, again we said it right, uber uniques are useless. By the way, YouTube, if you're here right now and you haven't liked the stream yet, don't forget to do that. Thank you. So uber uniques are useless to a degree, but if if the game actually gives me now for every 50 tiers, a okay, game, the game will give me one one spark. Then I could, if I want to, craft a useless uber unique of my choice. And considering the time investment that I do, I mean, how, how much time did 200 pit levels cost me now? I think I spent like, I spent 10 hours or so, roughly, on, on getting down here. I, I, I don't have the numbers. I, I think it, it like, let, let's, let's, let's say, assumingly, it was 10 hours now, okay? It took me 10 hours to get, to get this deep into the pit. Which is a, which is a okay time investment, right? I mean, some people take longer, some people take shorter. Fail, fail, fail and, fail and uh, like trial and error thingy, shenanigans, the banks, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I wouldn't mind if I get rewarded with an uber unique. I mean, I could have also spent ten hours with essentially farming Durio. I mean, if I spend ten hours farming Helltide and doing Durio, I would most likely have a unique too. Only that I enjoyed the pit more than mindlessly farming uh, Helltides and Durials. So, good thing. Yeah, we're making, we're making tempo chat. We're making tempo. Are we doing another one with this build? Because I just wanted to do another one with this build. And then we're going to essentially work our way towards uh, a new build. Okay. Is there a sweet spot for the pit? Uh, tier 60, 70, roughly. I think from tier 40 on, you're getting Neath Iron. And like 60, 70, 80 is like very, very decent pit levels to do. Uh, that you don't have to go higher. Especially, again, like right now, master working materials are a joke. Because I have over 20,000 master working materials. And even if I try, I can literally not run out of them. Okay? I, I, can, I cannot run out of master working materials at this point anymore. But what I can run out of is Veiled Crystals, so I can't actually master work anymore. So, yeah. Um, so, so <laughs> that's a bit stupid, and that's also what needs to be heavily addressed, right? Like, because I, I shouldn't be able to, to run out of Veiled Crystals before I run out of master working mats, because I'm actually master working, right? It's called master working. It's called master working mats. And Veiled Crystals are Veiled Crystals. They are supportive, they're supportive bonus mats. 
but th that one is being addressed already. I just like to complain about it. But yeah, so that, that's why like technically doing like something around 60, 70 is, is more than enough in terms of the pin. And the, the next levels again is missing a carrot mistake. So if if now we had the chance to get resplendent sparks, I would have my carrot in the stick, right? I mean that that means if I beat the pit, if I do all 200 levels of the pit, I get an Uber unique. That's cool. I mean like seriously, that that's a very that's a very nice thing to do. And and not only do I get an Uber unique, okay, right now that that would be the interesting part. So if I do if I do all 200 levels of the pit, and I get four resplendent sparks, I would not only get one uber unique, I would actually get the uber unique I want, correct? Because I could craft an uber unique. That 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 is a very juicy. That's a very fat carrot, Jack. That's, that's, a, that's a very fat carrot. And something where you feel like, again, your time wasn't wasted, correct? So we're coming back to the point where, where you don't, I'm dead. Why did I, why am I not dead? Temerity. Because usually I die when I stand in, in that, uh, but Temerity saved me actually. So that's a good one. Okay, who do we have? Scorch of the Land. Yeah, he's, he's usually a good one too. Fine. I'm not ready yet. When we're gonna have Elias, Elias is a nice shadow because uh, his fire is actually avoided by just standing next to your minions. Um, that snake thingy is also relatively easy avoided because it's kind of focusing on my minions. Again, Elias is also relatively easy avoided. Much of the land is really, really nice one. The only, the only dangerous thing is his fire breath. If you're actually standing AFK in it, right? You could die. But most of the time you should be, oh. most of the time you should be safe. And that's a tier 200. That was a really good one. Again, let's look at the loot. Okay. This is tier 200 and I'm getting one dagger with one greater affix. I mean, this is exactly the same loot as a tier 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, and so on. Could you use Army of the Death instead of Corpse Explosion? Not for this build. It would be stupid to do it for this build. If you can go through 200 levels of the pit, what do you need an Uber unique for? It's not the point what I need it for, San. I would still have it. So, so the question is not, would I need an Uber unique after clearing 200 levels of the pit? I don't. I don't need Uber uniques for anything. Still though, if I clear 200 levels of the pit, I could now go here and I could try out Tyrael's Might. I could try out the Ring of Starless Skies. I could try out the Harlequin Crest. So it allows me to get an item where I could try out new builds with. And it's something to flex. Right? I mean, end of the day, 200 levels of the pit cleared. I get an Uber unique and I can be like, look at my cool Uber unique. I worked for this. I got it. So right now I have how much Neath Iron, guys? <gasps> this is my, this is my material. I have 40,000. 40,000 Neath Iron. Coming to the point. Remove... Remove the random chance of master working, right? Because currently again, master working has a random chance, right? Master working is RNG um, in, in terms of is it, if it succeeds or not. But if you if you now make the crafting cost higher, because right now you pay like 50 neath iron for crafting. I mean, make it cost 100 neath iron per tier, right? Or, or even 50 or, or like, like, but make, make the neath iron cost for master working to 12 harder and that's actually a good thing okay so now we're gonna make a new build chat now we're gonna change the build and we're gonna turn it into the army of the dead build okay before i do this i'll be quickly running for the toilet be right back
Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get things off the ground now. With a level 200... Tier 200 full summoner. So we're not playing a uh, basic skill. No course skills being played. More points left over than usual. Main reason that I don't skill into certain things. Huh. Argon board can not stay like this. Needs to be refunded and redone. What's, what is this shirt? Uh, just, just a, just a fancy, fancy shirt with fancy, fancy geometry on it. But happy you're noticing it. Thank you very much. We're gonna play corporal for the movement speed. And crit for the crit. Hmm. other board did we take here hmm cult leader What do we do? Mm. What we take here again? We good. Exhumation, Corporal, Dead Razor.
<clears throat> there be the essence glyph. Did I actually change the Paragon board a bit here? Could I get another glyph activated? Mm. I could technically get another glyph activated. i weasel out some points. But which glyph? Hmm. Really control. There's none that gives me <clears throat> interesting multipliers on my minions. Mm. The easiest would be exploit. Exploit only needs like a couple of things activated. Like I need only three more points and I get that. One more point, weasel out somewhere. Hmm, damage reduction point. It's okay. Okay. I wonder if Bone Spear will make it to S tier again. Nope. I have played Bone Spear, and the actual pure Bone Spear is ass in comparison. Like, it's absolute giga ass. It's so ass, it's not even worth to talk about how how ass it is. Like, it's 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 ginormous, ginormous, super monkey ass. It's the biggest ass in the world. Doesn't get assier. Like it's horrible. Okay. That's Army of the Dead together with Ray Skeleton, Corpse Explosion, Corpse Tendrils, Blood Mist, and Decrepify. The interesting part is that the equipment stays to 90%. So we have minions, we have hardened bones, we have the shadow curse goes away for that's actually different because we're now gonna be putting unyielding commander on our necklace for the super damage boost and we're going to be putting frenzy dead on our gloves actually we kind of don't need frenzy dead because th this is like this is like crazy part we're currently at what is it we're at 60 percent attack speed 33 plus 25 mm, and our key passive gives us another 33 so technically we wouldn't actually need frenzy dead but i really do like frenzy dead so here we go the blighted aspect also goes away interesting what aspect am i missing we have army of the dead we have um we have the summons the minions we have this we have skeleton what am i missing what am i what where, where's where's my build where's where's my where's my build my builds uh full summoner without bone spear i need the summoner without bone spear and only army yeah heart and bones reanimation yeah we're actually playing reanimation fuck me sideways whisper in my ear and call me animal names chan we actually have reanimation i'll be down okay done you know what the coolest part is? That I might have replaced all these affixes right now, correct? But there's just no sadness because I can re-reapply them really easily. Correct? Okay, we are still going to play Skeletal Reapers and we're still going to play Shadow Mages. We're not going to play anything else. And the only sadness is that we can't raise the damage of Shadow Mages with this build that much, but we're raising them otherwise. So that would be a tier 200 pit right now. Let's see how much different the damage is. Okay. 
Okay, the goal is you always start with Army of the Dead, then you're essentially using your Blood Mist and your Corpse Explosions to reduce the um, cooldowns to then keep exploding things. I mean, ah, well, what I'm missing is I technically could add Black River to this again, right? Didn't add Black River this time. And I, I was playing Black River, but it's, it's like the question between my personal more damage or, or just minions doing more damage. Army of the Dead again. Blood, mi blood Mist around. Pull things together, more quirks explosions, just some light quirks explosions. Means you're doing fantastic damage. It's just like the interesting bonus boost you're getting for for having. You see how fast my army of the dead now had a cooldown reduction there happening? Boom, army of the dead. Again, cooldown reduction. Dude, they're doing so much damage when they're when when they're when they're army of the dead it, it's like it's crazy what, what's coming out of it and your goal is essentially with your lucky hit and everything to reduce the army of the dead cooldown to levels where you could spam it and that's also where where flicker step is an option in this build so because with a flicker step you would essentially pull everything together like this right get everything together and then i would now blood mist in get out of the blood mist and then da just dash through our opponents one single time that's like something that is really really funny but i don't have a flicker step yet but i think it would just so hardcore reduce the um cooldown that then you have to get, like right now see everything is stunned boom flicker step that would be like a 10 percent cooldown reduction on the army of the dead straight away it would make perfect sense to actually do Go in, pull everything together, dash through, right, flicker stab. I need more time. I couldn't even say which necker is faster right now. From, from a feeling, from watching chat, what do you think? Was the shadow necker faster or is this one doing more damage? in more cooldown reduction oh, this is actually really cool for cooldown reduction i do miss my bonus blight for cooldown reduction though you, you do you do feel that but uh, i'll be damned if we don't have like army of the dead almost every single encounter right And there's army for dead again oh wait what where when why what where when why what i mean seriously what where when why like what touched me there absolutely uncalled for nuisance seriously N nothing nothing was even there to touch me you know i move the dead i mean use it essentially like for every encounter like don't be don't be shy guys army of the dead is supposed to be used when whenever it's available just spam it out then you're getting so many corpses oh i can't pick this up because that that would make the pit right now too easy and i couldn't be testing uh how much more damage we actually do against the boss right because that, that's the goal right now we want to see how much more damage we actually do deal against the boss so kind of counterproductive I mean, we're, we're definitely oh we're doing more damage versus the boss like right out of the house actually swinging here chad jesus yeah this this is more damage like right away than the shadow build uh interesting didn't expect that damn it's, it's working quite good 
Okay, let's go. We're not activating army right away. Now we activate in. And look at the damage. Chat, look at the damage. Oh wow, what did I just stand in? The army multiplier is definitely working here. Very fine. I mean, I just stood in some, some, you know, ow. It's about to die, everyone. I mean, I'm, I'm mainly dying because I'm just pushing hard and I'm not taking like care of my personal health. Okay, let's see the damage melt when this is active, Chad. There's less stun, that's for sure. But we're, we're having less uh, car control. What? 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 I'm, nothing. Nothing. He, he came out of hiding and I just took damage from what? Did he hit me with a bleed by standing still? I mean, seriously, what, what hit me? Explain. I need more time. I need more time. Oh, I, I stood in the pool of death right now. Okay, right now I walked into the pool of death, Chad. Okay, listen. Golem is good for single target if buffed, right? Yeah, but that's the thing. Golem is only good for single target if buffed, right? And the the main problem is that Golem is um, fairly useless against group of mobs, but not only against group of mobs. The problem with Golem is that... Ow. This is definitely faster than the Blight. I'm just standing there. So so Golem is, is, is uh, good in damage. Uh, but but again, he's useless in in hordes of mobs and his AI is shit because as soon as you start running in a circle Your golem is kind of glued to your booty. Also, the 30% damage reduction is nice and dandy andy, but it's useless in the long run Because the one hit still one hit you so the golem doesn't save you from getting one hit um, And the shockwave golem is actually so much better. Oh, don't open teleport back. Jesus mistakes this is definitely faster than the blight in terms of damage, uh, but uh, the, there's the, the downside again. Um, I mean, it's it, it maybe because we're just fighting the den mother here. She's an annoying opponent. Um, blood blood mist. So my blood mist cooldown is different uh, because obviously I'm I'm like uh, I'm lucky hitting more with the other build, uh, which allows me to essentially use the blood mist more liberally, right? That's, that's like that's definitely an advantage i mean we have five ranks and blood mist in comparison to the other build but since we don't have a core skill to trigger any kind of lucky hit because that's it right i can go for this right now and the cooldown is actually relatively low because we were lucky with a lucky hit but we essentially have to like okay i just have to activate blood mist or dash there because i can't walk out of this uh because we essentially just have to like think about when to actually use the blood mist because we just don't have it on every encounter I think that that does make a it makes a huge difference. I mean, technically, you know, I just I'm just lazy and I want to use the blood mist on every uh, boss echo summon because the boss echoes are just simply annoying, right? So whenever see there's the next boss echo, so I'll use blood mist again. And so, sometimes you're like really lucky with a cooldown reduction. I mean, as you can see, like my blood mist is available right now straight away again, right? So I can use it here on on him to not die. I gotta look out for her to not overwhelm me. There's my blood mist again. Actually, we're having like really blood mist a lot right now. There's a little coming, so I blood mist again, right? To, to knock it over. Well, and the damage, the damage as soon as army is active is quite nice. I would just like to have multiple armies versus the fight. So only only having one army is not is not making me happy enough. But in order to get more armies, I would have that's Greece. That's not lucky hit Shin. Um, in order to get more armies, I would have to get a core skill 
That doesn't look good. Die, die, die does not make you feel like a hero. I mean, welcome, welcome to just how how the end game of the pit is. It's a grueling end game. And the skill, the skill you have to display is the one where you avoid getting one hand. Uh, do we have one with uh, cooldown reduction? Actually, never sure if we have one. What crit chance are we at? We're currently at oh shadow resistance only fifty two. I could actually explain some things. What's best way to farm Durio mats? I mean Helltide. I mean right now Helltide gives you all the mats you're looking for. Helltide gives you the Varshan mats. Helltide gives you Living Steel. Helltide gives you Distilled Fear. Helltide gives you even ex uh, dist um, Exquisite Blood. Helltide is a one stop for all at this point. They actually changed it super nicely to really provide. See, now we're Blood Misting in. And that Blood Mist, if we're lucky, uh, gives us some good cooldown reduction for our... our army of the den so i'm always blood misting ahead as well to put like more more traps down more corpses right so so you blood mist in you're trying to get your corpse tendrils off and then boom boom curse 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 cooldown reduction curse 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 the most annoying thing sadly is that they nerfed the lucky hit of corpse explosion i mean this is currently only at 36 percent it used to be at 52 percent now 36 versus 52 percent doesn't sound actually like a lot turns out it is a lot right i mean if we're like like the current lucky hit chance is 10 percent for decrepify to do something that means 36 percent a 36 percent lucky hit chance is a 3.6 chance okay so every corpse explosion has a 3.6 chance to give me a cooldown reduction that is not a lot That is almost non-existent, right? I mean, it would be nice if you actually enter the room, by the way. It'd be like really weird when they refuse to enter rooms. Thank you for the corpse. First. Pull. First, pull, army. I have to say, despite the single target damage being better, um, the shadow build has felt a bit smoother, but that's mainly just due to being able to actually use a core skill. It's like the, the only thing this build suffers from is not having a core skill. And again, you can't actually do use a core skill. Like, technically, you could put Blood Mist away and you could... Um, get the golem so blood mist away and golem in the problem with blood mist away and golem in is that golem is not as good as blood mist and you're using losing 30 percent damage the damage multiplier so i mean you, you could get your golem right and i really do like my golem but the reality is that the 30 percent crit damage multiplier counts for you and for your minions so it's just just a no-brainer Right. I mean, it's working good for both builds, though, so I'm I'm happy about this. Like both Necker builds, both both Summoner builds can clear tier two 100. What I don't know is if the Bone Summoner could do it. So, do you want to see the Bone Summoner as well, guys? So this is now currently the Army of the Dead Summoner, but there's another one. So so this is not actually the last Summoner build we have. We have another summoner build and it is the the bone summoner that's using a bone spear together with all the shebang and it is very strong and it's quite interesting because i'm not sure if the ossified essence multiplier is actually working yet it's, it's working but the main the main plan we're having with that build is we're essentially using minions um we're using minions to summon oh i am so dead i am so dead i am so dead i'm stuck uh we're using minions to summon bone spears and i'm not sure how well this one will do on the higher it did it did do good on the lower pits but again i have no no like clue what we'll see on the higher pits there 
Okay, general clearing speed of the pit is not much higher. I have to say. I mean, this this was a bit of a bad design, uh, like that layout wise. But the actual clearing speed of of the pit is not is not improved with the Army of the Dead build. It's kind of like as fast as the other build. And Blight or Army of the Dead for for general clearing is same. I reckon. Oh, I was hoping these would be enough to actually get me. Oh, Jesus, that's annoying. Didn't want to use my army there because now I don't have it in the boss fight straight away. Unlucky. Almost died there because I'm a bun. Need army of the dead, but you notice how my my lucky hit thing is actually like having a hard time to get my lucky hit down, right? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> yeah, as soon as army is active, the damage is crazy. Like he's he's just melting away, right? It's actually funny to see. Good fine. Okay, but now now bone spear. Okay, do we do it? So I would say the <clears throat> the shadow build feels safer to play. Interestingly enough, I think the shadow build can also scale higher. Okay. Now let's go for the next. Okay, so the cool part about this is okay. We are we need to actually change the build because now we need the deathless visage okay which one are we gonna take the maximum resource one the maximum damage reduction one no we take the one that has the maximum multiplier this one has the maximum multiplier actually wow this one is insane jesus i mean this is master work a couple of times uh but technically i want to take this one and actually master work it to the max do i have enough veil crystals for this let's check i have oh no i mm. Okay, I need to take this one then. So we're going to take the Deathless Visage because what, what is the very interesting part, Chad? That when you're using the Deathless Visage and the Bone Mages, what's going to happen? What's going to happen, Chan? What happens is that the Skeleton Mages, they are shooting the Bone Spears out. Okay. You're a bit horny about Necro. I mean, I, I'm, I'm with you. The fun part is that all the summoner builds are easy interchangeable. And I think summoner builds are even going to dominate the leaderboard. That's cool. So let's actually put Bone Spear into the equation room here right now. Uh, ranks out of Blood Mist into Bone Spear. Bone Spear for vulnerable. Uh, now we're going to put Bone Spear in. Okay. We're going to make multiple tra training dummies. We're going to get our skeleton mages. Now the skeleton mages have a chance to cast bone spear. Do you notice how the bone spear, look at what they're doing, Chan. The bone spears are summoning the deathless visage thingy. The problem is the minions are dying. Okay, so your skeletal mages are attacking so fast that they're actually killing themselves continuously. Which is an actual bummer. This is a problem. How could we prevent that? How could, how could we prevent that, that they're killing themselves? It, there's actually a way. Okay. There's a way. Uh, and that would be... Blood orbs. So we could take our bone spear now to make things vulnerable, right? And then we could make our corpse tendrils do blood orbs. The bug with the blight and the new amulet is really a bug. Yes, it's a, it's a bug. 100% it's a bug. Because it's triggering also 5% lucky hit chance thingies. Way too easy. So we're going to keep the same things. Crit chance, summoning damage, attack speed, double skeleton mages, double skeleton mages. Because this is interesting. If my skeleton mages have a chance to double cast, right? then my skeleton mages can actually double cast the um the bone spears too right more cast more bone spears 
Uh, we're going to keep the Ring of Medellin, Sacrilegious Souls. We have the Army of the Dead still. Uh, I'm actually going to try. Wait, no, Army of the Dead. <laughs> I can't use Army of the Dead with this one. Ah, yeah, I can't use Army of the Dead with this one. Mm -hmm. So this is a no, this is a no ulti build. <clears throat> and the main reason for that is... And we're not playing this, we're playing Ossified Essence. <clears throat> because the bone spears that are being thrown from our minions are actually getting boosted by this. Interesting, right? So our bone spears are getting boosted by this. Mm, we need the cooldown reduction still. We're going to have to skill into this. Technically, we need ranks and bone spear over corpse explosion, but I think corpse explosion is still more damage than bone spear, actually. Mm. We want more ranks and skeletal priest healing because that would keep our dudes more alive. So that should work, probably. Mm. Okay, now what do we have? We have we we need to change some things. Okay, we need to change the unyielding commander up here to. Probably ossified because like ossified would mean that our like the bone spears that are going out from our minions cast above 50 essence do more critical strike hits and that actually is is working all the time so i think that would be good then our gloves have frenzied this has minions this has grasping veins I'm not sure if instead of your minions more damage, you technically want to take Serration because that would give us the Bone Splinters for Vulnerable, right? Uh, not Serration, um, Splintering. So that would give us the Splintering aspect for the bonus Bone Spear Shards that are going out of the minions as well. So let's try that out. Splintering uh, with Tendrils, with Ossified, with this. Okay, let, let's uh, let's sacrifice the Warriors just to see how much damage are our mages actually dealing. So we sacrifice these. For more shadow damage, then we're actually... Oh, no. One thing we need is a cold dominion. Fuckity figgity. We need to not have the skeletal priest heal us anymore. And that means... The same. Are you excited for this build? Technically, it should be the highest damage build possible. Oh, we haven't done the Paragon board. Fuck. This is going to be a hard split because right now we need to boost the damage of our bone skills quite some. Mm, flesh eater. I wish... So one thing that I would wish for, and you know what it is, guys... I wish for deleting just the Paragon board with one click. What do you think? Because right now, my standard setup is always the same. So my, my first two Paragon boards are kind of the same. But if I could just delete a whole Paragon board with one click, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? All right, it sounds like such a simple change as well. Something that shouldn't be all too hard to pull through, right? A cool thing is I can actually use corporal here because physical damage. We're only doing physical damage. Now we go into the bone graft board because bone graft now works this time. the essence cliff so technically we're we're doing a little bit too much of a split with this board why because we're right now pushing the um bone damage and we're pushing the other damage so te technically
we should focus on only the bone damage and say goodbye to minions in any capacity but i just simply can't do that because i think it's like way too smart to actually boost your minions in some ways Actually, this multiplier of 15 is just too good. And it's just stupid to play minions and not boost their damage somewhat. Okay, we get one, two, three, four activated. If I can decide if this should be exclamation or not. And we're doing corpse explosions, so stupid to not boost exclamation again. But I need to see that I have enough points for Send of Death because Send of Death is always hard. I need one, two, three, four, five. What, what do I want to take here, Chan? I mean, technically, I could just take control. Okay, where can I where can I reduce some things? I could reduce do summoning damages here. probably have to just get rid of that crit node here oh no i need two more oh no i need two more <laughs> very unlucky you just just to make this work okay we get exploit good done so ladies and gentlemen uh, how much damage would our mages do now Figured all the bone skills and corpse explosion still does more damage. Yeah. That's a reasonable amount of damage. Not ready yet. Oh, they're, they're doing... Jesus. Jesus, they're doing... They're doing respectable, reasonable damage, Chad. The best part is they're actually not dying because if I pick up the blood orbs that are coming out of the corpse tendrils... Okay, let's see if this is faster now. This is not making it to life. No, this can make it to life, Azen, because it's not OP. You, you'll just see in a second. It has its weaknesses, um, especially with like the skeletal dudes having a chance to die. I mean, all summoner builds are good, but none of them is overpowered right now. What's currently the best build to level up fast as a necromancer? Uh, it's actually summoner until level 60, uh, like bone spear summoner until level 60, and then you phase over to full bone spear, Philippa. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Mistakes were made. Oh, I need to teleport out. So again, like the builds are strong, but nothing is broken in the current way. Uh, by the way, I'm not saying that it is the smartest thing to do to actually put all the points into Corpse Explosion over Bone Spear. The thing is, I can do unlimited Corpse Explosions where with the Bone Spear, I always have to look out how many I will want to do. Because currently, I have no Essence Regain, okay? So I'm not going to actually be spamming the Bone Spear because I continuously have to make sure that my Essence is actually full full because we're currently playing the ossify key passive okay so we're playing the ossify key passive right and that one gives me more damage the more essence i have and if my essence is full then my minions are actually doing most damage so what i actually need is i need different boots than these ones because these boots are not doing it uh what i would need is essence per second so we get essence and there's items that actually give us essence per second correct and this is what you technically would want to have for this build i mean i i do think you have a good pair of boots 
but you would want to have an item that gives you essence per second let me quickly check this it's probably on my my blood build because essence per second has you easily topped up without even trying right i mean imagine you just get x essence per second So what we have, uh, where are, where are my boots? I mean, seriously, where are those? I mean, that's the helmet with essence per second, right? Where are my boots? Who has them right now? I have four Necros I need to check. Does Necro move faster now though? Yes, we have a skill that gives us movement speed and it's kind of mandatory to take it's a little bit sad so they gave us a movement speed so we have the standard movement speed of all the other classes can you can you imagine this chan that's it we got a movement speed skill and we get a movement speed in our skill tree so to to even out our movement speed to the other classes so instead of blizzard actually giving us just more movement speed per se uh we are now forced to do that great isn't it Okay, we're gonna take these uh, boots here. They are made for walking. We're gonna have them get enchanted with the gold. I don't have the veil crystals. Well, great. Appreciate it. Good. Now let's see. We're going to make minions. See, now my minions are about to die, but... Oh, I forget to activate my skeleton warriors again. Uh, sorry, John. Let's do Skeletal Warriors back again. Okay. I'm almost ready. So you probably want to have a video about this build too, right? The damage is quite nice. And again, my minions are unable to die because of the um because of the blood orbs. So I just walk through these bunch of blood orbs, right? Minions are doing less damage than the other two builds currently. Oh, that's that's the interesting question actually huh the bone spears that are going out of our minions right are these bone spears uh stat boosted bone spears so are the bone spears that are going out of the minions Are these the one out of five or the more bone spears? Because technically, since they're launching bone spears, they're actually launching the one out of five bone spears, Ryan. So more ranks and bone spears will be preferred for this build. Yeah, I mean, like, like the, 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 obviously, the damage the bone spears do are affected by your damage. That's that's obvious, right? But but like, my my question was just like, what level of bone spear are they shooting? I mean, is the is are they shooting a base bone spear that's affected by me? But technically, they should shoot my five out of five bone spear, so it would make sense to actually get the higher level bone spear. 
That shouldn't have killed me. Just saying. I mean, it's beautiful if it does, though. Like, super not annoying. Not sure what hit me there because of the flag issue in the back. I have to say it's a surprise to see how much less damage it's actually dealing than um it's, it's actually not a surprise how much less damage it's dealing because the other two builds have like two two things going on for them that's a bit more hold on. Sorry you weren't supposed to just hit my head there. But I'm, I'm not surprised it's doing less damage than the other two builds because the other two builds both have like a huge damage boost, right? The the one build has a 120%, the other build has a 150% damage boost. I mean, sir, you're you're like just really ignoring the minions right now. Uh, the pet damage doesn't affect the bone spear proc, or the pet damage does not in any way, shape, and form affect the bone spear procs. Um, but that's the whole like the whole point of still boosting your pet damage is why would you not boost your pet damage when the minions are already attacking? I mean sure it's it's worth it to to boost your bone spear damage to the max, which we have been doing, but like us boosting the other things hasn't sacrificed anything. So us making sure that our bone spears do more damage hasn't didn't didn't cost us a single single thing. Right? It didn't didn't make us weaker to do that. It's something very important to keep in mind, right? If 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 like we would compromise the bone spear damage for pushing the minion damage, that would be stupid. But at this point, we kind of like push the bone spear damage and the minion damage, which makes perfect sense because well, you, like your minions are attacking. I'm not sure why these one hits are hitting me, but the main reason is my barrier is not there. Right, because the current the current only barrier we're having is not scaled to priest boosted anymore. Which is a bit sad. This is by the way to the question of temerity worth it or not, 100 percent worth it. Because it's, it's preventing like these random one hits that are hitting us. I mean we only have eleven thousand armor right now. Oops. We actually only do have eleven thousand armor right now because we changed some things up. Yeah, I have to say that the actual um the actual two other builds are working way better. I mean, ma mainly like we're coming back to a point where uniques are shit, right? So what's what's the problem? I mean, I have twelve thousand armor, correct? Because I'm playing two uniques. Now you could say, Pony, we can get rid of the pens. That's true. We could get rid of the pens. And if we're not if we're not already having temerity going on, we could uh, sacrifice the pens for these pens, and they would give us up to fifteen thousand armor, making us a bit more tanky, right? But literally, due to playing this helmet, we're missing out on our usual helmet that we play, and that is my usual. Oh, no, that's not my usual helmet. Uh, that's my usual helmet, which provides us with another <laughs> boatload of armor, right? So, so that's that's very useful. So let's try out the pans to see how much more tankiness they add. Oh, uh, we have 15,000 armor. We can we can drink a potion. So that's enough. Boop, boop. I mean, it's good to see that our our two minion builds are doing good and that the bone build is actually weaker. I'm not saying the bone build is bad, by the way, chat, because the bone build will just delete everything like um everything like crazy. So if I would go now for a uh what was it called again for any like tormented boss, uber boss, anything like this would just die. Right? They, they would just die. Only that this minion build right now is, is essentially struggling with a tier 200 pit opponents from an HP standpoint, which is totally okay. Because it didn't expect you to actually do better than the other two builds. The amount of damage procs we're seeing though is interesting. Oh, we need to change one thing. Boys are doing barely any damage. 
I mean, they're doing millions of damage, right? So, so the actual bone mage procs are doing millions of damage. Just don't get me wrong, chat, right? You, you, you do see this. It's going in. They're, they're doing, they're doing bounty full of damage. Just in comparison to the other two builds, not a lot. And I see that there, there's, there's, there's millions. There, there's like hundreds of thousands, right? But it's just not enough. I mean, let, let's see this. Mm, do I have boss material to summon anything? I think I have beast of eyes. Beast of eyes is probably the only one. I think bone mages need other ways to scale. I mean, bone mages do scale with your physical damage was actually really, really easy to do. I think I have distal fear. There here, 26 distal fear. So let's uh, just see how fast they delete a normal boss, which they should obviously. Uh, we could also see wait interesting question because again not everything needs to be a pit 200 build right uh let's do a here tier 100 nightmare dungeon let's do that that that's that's actually more interesting because doing a tier 100 nightmare dungeon is is fine <clears throat> did he not open the tier 100 he didn't open it right i'm not blind he didn't open it because usually if i move my mouse it would show the one i know why he didn't open it why because we just closed the pin so it actually does happen when you close the pin that he like he, he now officially closed the pit instead of going into a tier 100. Shirai Sanctum should be fine. Did he open it this time? Does he open it? There he is. Which are full black build with even piercer? Yes, we even have a video about it. A thank you, Bloodfire, by the way, for the subscription and support. Welcome as a new supporter. Also, chat if you did bring your Prime subscription or if you'd like to membership on YouTube, feel free to. Also, drop the like there. Thank you very much. So now, now let's play it in a tier 100 dungeon. So the hardest dungeon available in the game, chat. Right. Let's get let's get our bone mages popping. Good. Now, now we have the bow mages popping, right? I need more time. I'm not ready yet. Yeah. I mean, for, for this, they're like they're like absolutely tearing everything into pieces, right? I'm not even I'm not even doing anything right. I'm, I'm, I'm just not interested in actually Just find the lats around so for for a t normal tier 100 they're more than enough Which makes sense because the normal tier 100 is is what is like like a tier X um A tier X was it called again Like 30 40 pin so I guess this is going to be good like to a certain level of pits and then it's just not going to be good anymore. It's probably going to even work for leveling very well. Come on minions, do your thing. I don't want to have to do anything. I want you to be absolutely amazing. Slay Emerus and collect the key. Go boys. Go, go power. Oh Jesus, I died. Go, go, Power Rangers. Didn't pay attention. Sorry, chat. If a bone spear minion build would deal more damage to the Black River, the amount of luck hit you can get from the additional bone spears makes so many corpses. Uh, yes, but still, um, like it would, it would be a, a tad more damage, but it wouldn't make up for the lacking damage that you have from, from your minions per se. Right, I mean, the minions are just doing vastly less damage than the other two builds in comparison. I mean, the, the other builds were like, there, there's two reasons the other builds are doing more damage. I mean, you have the 150% bonus damage from Army of the Dead, which is actually really, really strong, right? And then you have the, um, 
And then you have the 120% uh, bonus damage from the, from the Blight. Which are both like two powerful things. Free ass Army of the Dead in this build, how? I mean, do you, do you want to question how? This is like not a trick question. Would only be possible if you drop like the... Goddamn. Blood miss, and that's not an option, right? What if you had Godfather? Nothing. It would be worse. I mean, if I had Grandfather right now, I would have to sacrifice two aspects, and that would be horrible. Hey, chat here. Tier 100 boss opponent. Oops. That wasn't fair. That was not a fair comparison. I'm sorry, Chan. This was... I, I'm sorry. I, I, I wanted to... I wasn't, I wasn't aware we had the artillery shrine. Where do you get temper recipes? They just randomly drop in the world and you get, uh, but yeah, they, they are rare, legendary and magic temper recipes. So they level up. Uh, they need to hire the drop rate because right now you will reach level 100 and you won't have every single temper recipe, which is shit. I tried it. By the way, how do I know this? I tried it, Chad. I tried to level my character to see how many temper recipes you would actually get and I did get not enough. So this was a very disappointing experience in that regard because obviously I, I want to have all the temper recipes and you would level up just to end up with, uh, quote unquote, not every single temper recipe, which is, which is a tad bit disappointing. Percentage we're missing, let's say half of them. And you have to consider half of them where ancestral drop rates were hired. Okay. So ancestral drop rates were hired. They are amazing. So as, as much fun as this build is and as good as it is, in good consciousness, I couldn't recommend you playing this because it's just way weaker than the other two. Fan. I mean, both mages are working, but it's surprisingly or unsurprisingly the, the weaker build. Yeah. I mean, obviously we have no barrier production going on because I just ditched the temerity, but I had to ditch the temerity to essentially get more. What we recommend for the pit? Uh, the Blight Summoner and the... Uh, what was it called again? The Blight Summoner and the other one. Uh, the full the full Summoner. So Ar Army of the, with Army of the Dead and without Army of the Dead. But both were, both were working more than... <clears throat> I don't actually know what killed me there. Both were working more than fine. Mm, where the I think the blight summoner was doing a bit better just from an overall feel from an overall vibe from an overall usefulness they're both cool it will be possible that they open back up closer to release unlikely why would they I mean like the honest question why would you open up the test servers again closer to release uh, we have like the test servers are there for testing not that you can actually play the game and we have tested now for enough days to give them valuable feedback and everything they need to kind of prepare the season for launch there's technically no reason to to put the test servers back on the on the menu because they, they have served their purpose for now Right? They've, they've given us what we need. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I do like the test server because I literally can't be asked to play season three anymore. Right? I'm, I'm done with season three. I don't want to hear season three ever again. Uh, wait, so the mages also shoot bone spears. Yes. So the mages shoot bone spear. My mages are shooting twice right now. So they have a chance that they actually double cast a bone spear, right? And the chance for the mages is 25 plus 17 percent so i could get that to double 25 percent so they essentially have a 50 percent chance to cast a bone spear and the bone spears that the mages are casting are influenced by my damage so my ossified key essence passive right that one boosts the mages then actually on on top of that the um I'm not ready. 
the aspects that boost bone spear boost this too like the splintering aspect and the unique helmet the deathless visage that creates these bone spear echoes well that one that one works too so everything that is bone spear related works because the bone spears that my dudes are casting are essentially my bone spears they're not anyone else's bone spears they're not you know timothy francis james bone spears they are my bone spears that's such a random drop that's such a random drop and that's actually what truly makes them great because you have these mages here blasting away with a super attack speed because you can also boost their attack speed quite some and they're just destroying everything are you going to do a video of the good, bad, and ugly of the PDR? Yes. So the next videos you can expect, again, is a... We, we got we got for you a PTR feedback video that wraps everything together. I won a tempering and master working video where we actually do talk about tempering and master working. I, th I don't think I've done actually one yet. Um, where Like the weaknesses, the problems with tempering and master working, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, then we're going to be making another video on uh, the Necromancer tier list. You know? Uh, I want to do a pit tier 100 video, obviously, where we where we talk a little bit about pit, pit tier 100, pit progression, and all that kind of stuff. That's also, uh, did I say Necromancer tier list? Uh, Necromancer tier list. Uh, then state of the Necromancer video because there's a lot of things wrong with Necro still. I mean, they they fixed a lot of th they they fixed minions, but they forget a lot of things, right? <laughs> um, which is kind of sad. So it's kind of fixed, but it's actually not fixed. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a tier 100 boss. Let's go to Uber Lula. Go to Uber Lula. Yeah, I, I think I get like six, seven more videos down the pipeline. Mm, that's a good thing um i mean i don't know how 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 the interest is i have to say my last two videos people didn't have that much interest already anymore i mean people are interested generally in what the test server has to offer but not really in respective build videos at this point which is obvious wow look at this one critical strike chance and cooldown reduction damn damn chan that's that's a that's a killer one i mean mine has critical strike chance and lucky hit chance but this one has like 12 percent cooldown reduction that would be insane for the army of the dead build. But does season five come out? Uh, somewhere in July. Actually, August. Not July, August. I, I, I'm actually not sure how they're planning to do it, right? So usually we're getting three seasons per year. But now they actually pushed one season back. Uh, four seasons per year. But they pushed one season back. So how do they want to keep up with their schedule? Right? It was like it was it was usually supposed to be april and then april after that is the next one's in july and then the next one was meant to be in october uh yeah it's gonna be rough i mean they might have to cut a season short otherwise to like keep up with their schedule okay ladies and gentlemen uber lila Okay, Uber Little Face 2. Wee woo. Wee woo. Come on, lads. We got this. Come on, lads. What a fun build. And they changed her face too by the way so now you just have to run away from these orbs and as you notice my necromancer has quite some movement speed right so i'm actually finally able to run away from these orbs right When the orbs don't actually one hit anymore they changed that one as well so you that, that's that's it why do you still need corpse explosion you don't need a corpse explosion but corpse explosion provides you with 
good amounts of damage you're boosting your physical damage anyways corpse explosion gives you consume corpse essence and fueled by death and if you consume five corpses you're actually getting uh 40 percent damage multiplier now you could say pony but the same thing i could do by jamming race skeletons yes you could you could five times in a row plus race skeleton well in the time where you press five times in a row to race skeleton just to actually get the bonuses i would have done like a million damage per corpse explosion on five different targets so five million damage uh that means 25 million damage while you press race skeleton five times so why do i still need corpse explosion because it's too good to not play it is absolutely dumb to not play corpse explosion i know there's a bunch of summoner builds who are like i don't want to play corpse explosion <laughs> for no reason ever so yeah is the game playable on console controller some people prefer console controller over mouse and keyboard vastly because it helps you with your hands and arms when it comes down to gaming fatigue I mean, reasonably, the game is fun, but you're clicking a lot of buttons, you're running a lot around, and the controller feels relatively natural on a movement perspective because you got your tiny stick to swivel around, right? You got your tiny, tiny stick to swivel your character around. So, yeah. My kick in, thank you. Thank you for the t shirt hype. I'm usually, I wear black t shirts, and that's it. I appreciate it. Wait, is there no Helltide here right now? I thought there was a Helltide here right now. I wanted to check something. Came too late. But using Blood Golem for 30% DR doesn't help you. You still get one hit. I've actually tried out the Blood Golem for 30% DR now many times. It is not enough. Uh, you're still getting killed. So, by the way, chat, we have some feedback points that we have already written. Is there anything you would like to add? So currently we have a bit of necromanza feedback in total and we actually do have a um so we, we have a bunch of necromanza feedback and we have normal feedback so for example scatter prisms only dropping from world bosses currently and not from helltide elites we have veil crystal cost is stupid so either reduced cost or uh, increased drop rate it's not higher drop rate it's called increased drop rate then we got Master working success chance is terrible. You should either raise the cost of the master working to double or triple. That would be better. Then we got reworking unique affixes because they don't meet the season four standards. Like Ring of Mandem with Minion Life is useless. Master working animations needs to be way faster. The buck where you can't enchant. I mean, also I want the damage reduction back on gear slash damage reduction temper that's what i would like to see damage reduction back on gear or damage reduction temper because right now there's not enough damage reduction in the game i mean uh maybe only dr on amulet offhand shield but there needs to be some kind of damage reduction right Then we can we can actually talk about this for minion ai sometimes gets stuck on corners walls and does not push forward depending on where you position so some sometimes minion ai just gets stuck right it's a bit stupid when i'm currently writing if all my necker has plenty dr well you have plenty dr but you still don't have enough loom I played I play a shadow necro shadow necro has the damage reduction over shadow damage then you have damage reduction there you have the damage reduction from the decrepify technically if you sacrifice your minions you have more damage reduction but you're stupid if you sacrifice minions right now uh you get the damage reduction from hardened bones and it's still not enough oh golem ai is stupid five golem ai is stupid um if if you run he just disengages combat and sticks to your character because that's currently what's happening uh like where your skeletons and your mages are actually attacking really well uh the golem just turns around and starts following you hot side there's a lot of people who are still yelling d4 bad 
I mean, despite D4 currently being in the best possible state with the PDR, uh, there's still people yelling D4 bad without a reason. There's still people very unhappy. I mean, yes, uh, poison, poison damage still too strong and overtuned. That that's a fact. So that, that, I mean, that's a minimal thing that they have a problem with fixing. That's a fact that they have a problem fixing this. Can you explain your take on thorns? If they get 100% of your stats, why do they not have minions inherit thorns? Skip, I don't know why your minions are not getting 100% of your thorns or how it's working right now. But yes, minions should get 100% of your thorns and it's stupid that, that they're not, like that's not working some way, right? Yeah, poison resistance does nothing. I mean, like, like you know? It's also random one hits despite a fully elemental resistance. Re resistance feels bad i mean I, I shouldn't die to a fire boop hitting me if i have 70 out of 7 resistance you know oh matishka this is just me writing my notes uh I, i'll be rephrasing this and remove the dead dumb stupid from it don't you worry this is just me randomly writing the notes. I mean, these are directly going to Blizzard, by the way. This is not going to the, this is going to the forum, but mostly going for, directly to Blizzard. There should be a race elemental cap tamper, though. Yeah, but should there be? I mean, like, so raising the elemental cap tamper wouldn't fix the issue of elemental damage being overtuned. It would just kind of show that the current elemental cap is stupid, right? You can actually raise your maximum elemental resistance with potions and with instances. I think instance could do it too, right? <clears throat> could an instance go here? Maximum resistance to all elements raised by one. It is it is absolutely stupid that this exists, right? So you can raise the maximum elemental resistance. But for that, I need to like really go down and craft some shit here to actually increase it, right? And then I have to drink a potion. It's just so many. Why not just make the elemental resistance 75 instead of 70%? Right? Tita, thank you for the 61 centuries of support. Tita, very good to see you there. Good to have you with us. Hope you're doing fine. Then we get 10. Um, greater affix items need, need to be displayed different similar to uniques because right now when you have a greater affix item right and i'm going in my inventory which of these items has a greater affix chat which, which one which one which one which one which one which one exactly so so if I was looking for the item that has a greater affix right now, right? I have to like go through every single item uh, to kind of find out here. This one has two greater affixes. But why is this not ret? I either, either make it red. Also, when it drops on the ground, this is okay. I'm fine with this, right? I'm fine with the number two. I can see this. <coughs> but as soon as it's in my inventory, it should be a different color. You're playing without any Ubers and with no season mechanic. You should not balance the endgame at this point. Wrong, Cruel. Because you're actually assuming that Ubers make things better. Sorry to tell you this, but Ubers are not making you more powerful. Ubers, in this case, will make you weaker. Every single minion build I'm playing would be weaker with an Uber. And a seasonal mechanic is only making me stronger. Just put the Roman numerals into the inventory icon. Yeah, I would be fine with that too. If you like uh, have the icon and like here in the top left corner or top right corner or bottom left or bottom right, there would be like a two or a one for the greater affix. But it needs to be instantly visible that this is a greater affix. Right? And that's like greater affix items need to be displayed somewhat different. Right? 
Veil crystal colors are the same as sacred items. I mean, we're not picking up magic items anywhere. We have this somewhere here. Wait. Um, wait, we, we can actually, like, this is a very important point. So, 11, magic, uh, sac sacred, rare items are useless after a certain level. Might as well not drop anymore and just drop failed crystals. Because my problem was that, like, I was still getting sacred rare drops, right? But that makes no sense because at, at point X, I just do want to see only Veiled Crystals. Because right now, since sacred rare items are useless after a certain level, right? When I reach level 60, 70, I, they'll never be picked up again. How will you be weaker with greater FX Shaco? Because Shaco doesn't boost anything in the minion board. I mean, in the full pure minion board, I'm playing Army of the Dead. I'm playing Corpse Tendrils. Corpse Tendrils don't profit from Shaco. I play Corpse Explosion, but that's not my damage, so it doesn't really shake a difference. Uh, I could get a bit more cooldown reduction on Blood Mist, so it doesn't really make a difference. And I could get a bit, bit, bit more damage reduction from Decarpify, doesn't make much of a difference. What I would lose for using Shaco is 5 to 6 ranks in Skeletal Mage Mastery. And 5 to 6 ranks in Skeletal Mage Mastery, as you can have on the item, uh, would mean another 120% less damage. So how would Shaco make you weaker? It would. I mean, you simply have to understand that even if Shaco has four greater affixes, it's not good for every build. Shaco is not, it's actually not good. It's not crazy. Not every build gets better by it, sir. Uber uniques do not make you inherently stronger anymore. How can I get the Seneschal Companion? Uh, not here. I mean, in, in season three, you have to play the quest and get that. Past said yesterday, greater affixes are being changed to make it easier to see Hopper. Yeah, well, they say that in the PDR forum somewhere, but I, I haven't seen a single tweet about this, right? So, so you're literally like you have, as, as I said, you have in the PTR forum, if you go through it and if you actually go through the posts and you are lucky enough to find a post with a blue post on it, right? So, so here, there's a blue post somewhere in, um, and there's a blue post somewhere in. So if you're lucky enough to find one with a blue post, then you can um then you can see like all these things but they're kind of we're kind of missing like a write-up right we're, we're kind of missing like a write-up where everything is put together so i don't actually have to go through things every single time to kind of figure out if they're working on it or not right when if they make a statement like they're working on something they should post them because i, I don't want to guess I, I do I do want to know, right? So we can we can keep keep like feedbacking this. I mean it's good that they're working on this, but more feedback on this is definitely gonna be useful feedback. I mean this is like this is like the main things that, that bother me. And obviously the, the main necro things, right? People that say D4 bad don't seem to know what an opinion is. I mean, people that say D D4 bad are either doing it to annoy you. Uh, they are generally just bummed and don't like Diablo 4, which is okay. But it also makes their opinion useless because why they're even here. Uh, and then there's the people that, that just hate. They, they just, they stop playing Diablo and they just keep hating because they're, I don't know, they're dumb. Dumb as fuck. <laughs> In each case, though, why are you still here, right? I mean, like, you, you like... <laughs> You literally have people that keep keep watching Diablo 4 videos just to comment that Diablo 4 is bad. And you're like, why are you doing this to yourself? It's like punching yourself in the balls and and like like laughing. Minions are using passive nodes a lot. Yes. Uh where some of the passive nodes are useless. I mean, a, a lot of the a lot of the minion nodes here need to be reworked. I mean, this is the cult leaderboard right now, correct? This node makes no sense. This node makes no sense. This note is okay. This note is fine. This note is fine. And this note makes no sense anymore. So note up here, actually the armor clad node. Uh, armor clad. Minion node is completely, completely useless at this point. Rework. Because, like, you, why would you need more armor and more maximum life when the minions are already getting all your armor and all your maximum life? It was actually funny because you did need to... 
Um, you did need to use this node to even remotely have your minions survive. That's for the thorn build. No, even for the thorn build is useless. Why? Why? So if your minions are getting 100% of your stats and you're at the armor cap, why do your minions need more armor? Right? What? Why do your minions need more armor when when they're at armor cap? A minion stat UI uh, will never happen, Sally. Like I I wish we could get a minion stat UI. We won't get anything like this. There will never be a minion stat UI because uh, Blizzard has their existing UIs here. It would be it would be great to have a working minion stat working se separate minion stat UI. I would like that. Did the armor cap change due to the stronger mobs in the pit? Yes, the armor cap changed, but again, minions are getting 100% of your armor, right? So if you're at armor cap, your minions are at armor cap. We've been at the first season four, it's 14th of May. 14th of May. And apart from this, I'm not actually sure if any of the other skills are useless. But I would prefer skill to warrior mastery and mage mastery would be one mastery, but that's just personal preference, right? I mean, that death defense node is useless, we all know, at this point. Um, I don't know if actually Necrotic Carapace finally works. A bit sad if it doesn't. They haven't said that minions have the same armor cap. Well, they haven't said, Tommy, you don't know, and no one knows. But the reality is, if minions are getting 100% of your armor, then they should have the same reduced damage reduced taken as you have. Right? Ryan. So if your minions have 18,000 armor and you have 18,000 armor and 18,000 armor is the armor cap, then having nodes like death defense is completely useless. I mean, I've literally put away, I have put away death defense. Okay. So I'm not playing this anymore. And I have put away the, the armor node from this one and even the max of minion life and armor node here. And guess what? Zero difference in minion survivability. Minions shouldn't get defensive stats from players. Minions tank better than warriors with full DR. If minions wouldn't get the defensive stats from the warriors, they would constantly die and be absolutely useless. I mean, again, having minions should be fun and not a hassle. And right now they're fun to have and not, not a hassle to have that the minions are tanking better than a barbarian for example is just like down to not enough damage reduction in the game the reality is i can give my minions another 40 percent damage reduction which is kind of nice right minions are generally getting all my cool damage reductions done i mean minions are just essentially getting my fancy pantsy damage reduction which helps zucana thank you for the 77 months what's up thank you for the six months of support welcome back to both of you thank you for for subbing here la, 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 the new la, scaling to 199 i don't know if 18k armor is really the cap because you still get a lot of damage in death the the cap is somewhere around 18 to 20k probably uh reasonably uh, there there's ways to test this but the problem is it doesn't make sense because you're just like i was at 25,000 armor and i got the same one hit as i got with 20,000 armor and 15,000 armor so tell me right Monsters aim for the player, so tanky is not the goal. Exactly. Monsters aim for the player. That's true. When you can, you can even do this, right? Right, Chan? Right? <laughs> you can get yourself skeletal warriors that skeletal defenders take 99% reduced damage. Uh skeletal uh, corpse tendrils. Uh, the corpse tendril aspect currently doesn't work uh versus minions. Uh, this this corpse tendrils, they do not work for minions, no. Uh because it states you deal the damage, so that is true. What works for minions is all damage, shadow damage. So if I uh where is it? 
the blighted aspect. Blighted aspect here. You deal increased damage for six seconds after sort of like key passive. This increases my all damage. Okay, this increases my all damage. And it actually does work for the minions that they do 120% more damage. The thing is, uh, I think Blizzard confirmed that this should work with minions as well. So Grasping Veins should work. And it definitely does work with the Ring of Mandown. Right? I used the Taunt Defenders in my Shadow Minion build was quite useful. Well, I, I've never found my Skeletal Dudes to actually die in any way. So I, I found... I found the defenders to be interesting, but the reality is your reapers don't actually die. So, so why go for defenders when your minions don't die? You know? I like the thing. I do believe minions are fine. Again, they're fine. They're not overpowered. I mean, if we're, if we're looking at what barbarian can do with dust devil or what barbarian could do the past three seasons, minions are not even remotely close to that in any capacity. But as you see, like my, my main, my, I don't have that many complaints, right, Chad? I mean, there's some more points that I don't have in the, in the top of my mind right now that I have to think about, but all in all, I'm, I'm reasonably happy. I guess I would, I would like to have sometimes maybe, maybe two or three more temper durability. Because I have to admit that with five temper durability, you're often breaking items. I mean, you have a one out of four chance to get what you want, correct? And with a one out of four chance and only five temper durability and twice a one out of four chance, it's often really hard to get what you're looking for. Right? Will the Codex of Power be seasonal or character bound? I mean, if the Codex will sync between all characters, or will we need to farm it over again on each character? Currently, the Codex is um, for everyone in the season for all your characters. And if I go over to my other Necromancer right now, I have my maximum rolled aspects, as it should be, in my opinion. So it should always be account wide and seasonal, as you're saying. Okay, so it doesn't make sense to farm this up multiple times. Yeah, legendary drop rates will be halved. Uh, this is definitely a feedback point. Um, legendary drop rate, despite doubled, is quite low. If it gets halved, equals to almost zero loot. This is a problem I had while leveling and in Nightmare Dungeons in general. If you do a Nightmare Dungeon, I sometimes get like two, three pieces of gear for a whole Nightmare Dungeon. And I mean, since we're not picking up magic items, right? We're not picking up magic items. We're not picking up rare items. We're only picking up ancestrals. Uh, I think the double drop rate is almost fine. If temper durability is zero, you can't temper anymore. Yes, that's the thing. So if I go now to the Smith and I temper, and I, let's say I go for a weapon, right? And I really, really want my summoning finesse. Skeletal mage damage. It, I, it could use up um, five of the existing tempers. And then I would have one single temper left to potentially hit chance for skeletal mages to cast twice. Now, this is the RNG. This is the RNG, correct? But with only five tempers and... I mean, here's only three options, right? But other things have four options. <sighs> like, it can be hard sometimes and you break items often. So maybe two or three more temper durability could be a thing. Also, you're supposed to pick up yellow items when leveling. Yes, you are. You are picking up yellow items during leveling. That's not the point. Again, if I am level 80 and I do a Nightmare Dungeon and the Nightmare Dungeon drops two, you, two Ancestrals, and all the yellows are useless anyway. So it drops two ancestrals. It just really feels bad. Because yes, we want less loot and more quality loot. But less loot doesn't mean no loot. Right? Should be no RNG in farm mats. Uh, like, I mean, like, again, the veil crystal cost needs to be reduced. 
I mean, like alone, alone one temper is 20 veiled crystals. Okay, so, so chat. One temper is 20 veiled crystals. If I roll five tempers, that's a hundred veiled crystals. One nightmare dungeon gives me 10 or 15. I spend 30 minutes in a hell tide and I have like 40 or 50 more veiled crystals. Right? So, and, and that's only for this, right? So if you want to, if you want to enchant an item, it costs you 75 veiled crystals. For 75 veiled crystals, I currently have to farm up to an hour in the hell tide. that's not an option and my question currently is if they bumped up this number to increase game time because if the veil crystals would stay this way the thing that happens is that, that everyone would have to play more to do basic things which would be good from the retention side of the game right it would be good from the retention side because people spend more time in the game but it would be miserable. Yeah, this is my job. Exactly. In the test server, I went through 20,000 Veiled Crystals already. Let's see how many Veiled Crystals I have. Okay, Chad? I went through 20,000 Veiled Crystals on the test server. I wish the number was a joke, but it is 20,000. Let's open Normal Diablo Season 3 character that has played a lot and see how many Veil Crystals do I have. Right? How many do I have? For Umami. Okay, oh, we currently have. Five thousand veil crystals. And that's a whole season of playing, right? <laughs> the whole season of playing. Let's see how many veil crystal enchanting costs right now in the normal season. So that that would be that would be like, you know, that's like two months of playing the game a lot. So if I now want to put a codex aspect on, that would cost me 30 veil crystals. Hmm. If I want to put that on, that doesn't even cost me a single veil crystal. Hmm. 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 How much veil crystal does re-rolling cost me? 15. I think it's also more, more there. Thank you, Ryan. So yeah, we, we know we know that the cost is obviously too high. But if we have everything for free, what's the point to play the game? I mean, you just you just listen when I said that you take 30 minutes to roughly farm 40 to 50 veil crystals and it costs 75 for for enchanting. That is not for free. That is not um that is not reasonable. We don't want things for free. We want to pay veil crystals. But again, if the base game mechanics cannot be accessed without hours of farm, that is terrible game design. Done. The basic game mechanics, like, and like, I, I want to, okay, sometimes you want to try out an aspect, okay? So I want to try out Hardened Bones, and then I don't like Hardened Bones, and I'm going to go for Aspect of the Might, and then I'm going to try out Crowded Sage. So I would do in the, in the matter of, 15 minutes, I would re-enchant an item three times with the new system, right? With the current cost of re-enchanting a new item three times in 15 minutes, I would take the equivalent of two hours of farm. So I have to farm for two hours to essentially experiment with three different aspects if I want to use them. That's not good. That's not good game design. That's not fun. 
that's again forcing me to farm to play the basic of the game. And then if I actually do find an item, right, and you want to temper it, you need another 100 to 200 veil crystal to temper it, which then goes uh, to, to temper it, which then goes for the next item after tempering, because obviously not only tempering costs that, then you're going for the master working and it would cost us another nine veil crystals per master work. So we need another uh, 100. Oh, yeah. And by the way, the masterwork can fail, which means that if I now press masterwork and fail, I lose nine veiled crystals. Yeah. There's no there's no discussion about here that the veil crystal costs inflated and stupid and it can't stay that way. Especially if I'm like, so if I'm 14, farming the PID gives you zero veiled crystals. Ergo, can't even master work with the PID. Think about it. Think about it for one th second, chat. So I can play the PID, right? I can play all 200 levels of the PID. And. During the pit, while I play the last 200 levels, right? During the pit, only legendaries drop. So there is not a single rare item drop. And I mean, I have the last two days, I've spent uh, now 12 hours to farm the 12 hours. I've uh, spent six hours for 80 levels of the pit, and I haven't gotten a single veil crystal. So I now spent six hours playing the game, didn't get a Veil Crystal, and if I now want to master work, I couldn't master work because the pit farm does not actually provide you with Veil Crystals. So I now have all the master working materials, but I have zero Veil Crystals. Hmm. Sad face. It's a Diablo game. I was farming Mephisto for days just to have some items and the weeks to have runes in Rune World. And now what? I'm cruel. Like, congratulations for playing Diablo back in the days. Um, that was Diablo back in the days. This is Diablo 4. It's okay if you want to reminisce, re rem reminisce about the past that everything used to be hard and the game needs to be hard and it needs to be grindy and I need to farm for one week to get my tier rune. And that's okay. Then go play Diablo 2. But this is Diablo 4. Diablo 4 is made for fucking casual dads sitting in front of their stupid console, in front of their TV, and they want to have some casual, nice fun. That's it. That's Diablo 4. It is grindy to a degree. It is challenging to a degree. But it's a fucking easy game. If you're looking for a grindy hardcore experience, and if you want to turn Diablo 4 into a grindy hardcore experience, you're going to ruin the game. Because that's not what Diablo 4 is. Yeah, this game is for 5 wives, 9 kids, and 11 jobs mid-age dad. It's still a Diablo game. Just don't try to make a different game. It's still a Diablo game. You're just not happy with it. <laughs> it is still a Diablo game. It, it is still that. It's just not Diablo 2, Diablo 3, or Diablo 1. It's Diablo 4. It's a new age Diablo game. It, you might have missed one thing, guys. This is not an ARPG. This is an SARPG. Yeah. Listen, an SARPG. It's a systematic <laughs> action role-playing game. It's not, it's not just simply an action role-playing game anymore. It's a, it's a game full of systems, and these systems need to make sense and work together. They said that in the campfire chat in case you missed it. They made a real they actually took 20 minutes to explain this to us. This is now a systematic action role-playing game that that has systems and these systems need to be making sense. Yeah. 
Besides grinding, having 5k Neath Iron and zero Veil Crystal does not make any sense. Exactly. Final point, final nail in the coffin, chat. Having currently 40,000 Neath Iron and not a single Veil Crystal to Masterwork, you know, Neath Iron is the masterworking material. Correct? So I have 41,000 and I cannot Masterwork anymore. Because I don't have Veil Crystals. So, where does it make sense to be out of Veiled Crystal, but to have... Yeah, 41,000 Master Working Materials. I mean, that alone... If, if that alone doesn't make you notice that something is not working the way it should... Then, I'm sorry, we can't talk about this anymore. I mean, if this alone doesn't make you stutter for a second. Scattered prisms drop from world bosses, but they also used to drop from Helltide. Uh, random elites could drop them. So scattered prisms could drop everywhere in the world, not only world bosses. They, they used to be rare, but elites could drop them. But right now, my main account has 51 of them. I think uber bosses used to drop them too and random boss letter bosses used to drop them too but right now it seems like that they only drop from world bosses and that's kind of stupid because i can i cannot sock it i mean i have these pants and the helmet right the pants and the helmet and i'm missing out on 27 percent total life currently Correct? Just reported and move on. I mean, Daryl, this is like, I, I'm Daryl, in case you missed this, this is a stream where we talk about feedback and we have discussions and we think about what to put in a list. I mean, this is how you give feedback, right? You, you talk to people about things that might make sense and then you argue and you see if maybe you're wrong or the other person is wrong or what the motivation is behind wanting a change or not. You know, this, this, is, this is feedback culture. This is how it works. Will feedback become a video? Yes, this will definitely become a video and this will also directly go to Blizzard. Legions drop them often also in PDR. I did two Legion events and I didn't get a single Scatter Prism. I was sad. I was, I was literally very sad to not get any, uh, any Scatter Prisms. I was trying to socket things and I simply couldn't. Uh, that made me kind of kind of unhappy. But yeah, so right now, right now I feel like we we got good feedback on the minions. I mean, like, so this is a big this is a big maybe, Chad. Maybe minions should only have seventy five percent of stats. I feel like minions are completely fine. I personally feel after playing minions now that they're completely fine. But for the sake of being self-critical towards the Necromancer, you could technically say maybe 75%. But in my heart, I don't want to type this. Because I, I do believe that minions are, in comparison to what the other classes can do, in comparison to what Sorcerer can do, uh, what Druid can do, what Barbarian can do, right? That minions are still fine. The only reason why minions are currently better than any other build is actually simple. Because Necromancer has zero defense. So this one is a big maybe spawn that I'll put even in brackets right now for the sake of it. Because usually, how does Necromancer survive? Necro takes the Litless Wall and the Bone Storm, and then he doesn't die anymore. The problem is that doesn't work right now because the enemies are doing too much damage. So... <laughs> So I tried it. I tried it. Litless Wall, Bone Storm, and you never die. But it doesn't. Minions should have 75% but stronger aspects to buff them. Minions actually do have very good aspects to buff them right now. The problem is, so the lower you make minion stats, the less meaningful aspects are. Because you have an aspect of reanimation, correct? So the aspect of reanimation gives you... Reanimation. The aspect of reanimation gives your minions 40% more damage. The thing is, this one used to be completely useless. 
because your minions didn't have stats to multiply. I think 75% should be a mistake. With 100%, they can't kill 200 bosses. We can kill 200 bosses, Lewis. Would you absolutely obliterate 200 bosses? I mean, as I said, this is a big maybe. I'm probably not going to include this, but it's just like as a as a food for thought. I don't think 75% would make sense. 100% is needed for minions to even be baseline viable. But yeah. So so it's kind of like you know that's where that's where we don't want to have minions in any way lower. But yeah, so you, you need the multiplier to multiply something, and if there's nothing to multiply, then. In my opinion, you shouldn't be able to speedrun pit 200. So our fireball sword killed the pit 200 boss in seven seconds. Um, yes and no. Like, so the whole... You should be able to kill the pit 200 boss in seven seconds. And you know why? Because of master working, tempering, and greater affixes. Because right now, greater affixes are insane. I mean, currently... So currently, I don't have a single greater affix, right? But I could get... Again, on my boots, a greater affix for scale to mage mastery, plus six. On my pants, plus six. On my gloves, plus six. That's 18. On my chest, plus six. That's 24. Oh, and on my helmet, I can get another plus six. So I could get plus 30. Plus 30 on scale to mage mastery. This is possible. If I get plus 30 on scale to mage mastery, okay? <laughs> my scale to mages are going to do... 600% multiplicative more damage. Multiplicative more damage. That means you have 600% multiplicative more damage times then that 12% times then that 6% times then the 18% times then the 10% uh, times the 45% times the 150% from the cult leader node, uh, you know, plus the actual skeletal mage damage that he does. Plus the plus three from the skill tree. Exactly. So 33. So that's actually 360% more damage. So like due, due to the power creep that's possible on greater affixes and that kind of stuff. The, the amount of bullshit that can be reached. I mean, like, look at this. This is plus five in corpse explosion. Non greater affix. This is, this is not a greater affix. This is not even master worked. Right? This chest piece has plus three in corpse explosion. I master worked it 12 times and went up to plus five. Uh, I didn't even get the 25% and the 25% on it. So with a greater corpse explosion affix, you could go up to plus eight or plus nine. That means like end of the day, you could get your corpse explosion up to like plus 30 more ranks to have your corpse explosion do 50 million damage per corpse explosion. Correct? And that's the thing right now. If you play the game, if you get the greater affixes, and if you then masterwork and temper that and get the cool cool things out of it, then everything will just die in mere milliseconds at some point. You want more challenging monsters that don't die in seven seconds? I am with you, Ryan. So why doesn't pit plus exist? I mean, it's nice that we have 200 levels of the pit, right? Just make another 50, but make them optional. So the first 200 levels of the pit are essentially what you need to do. Then you're done. And then they make pit plus. They could make nightmare dungeon plus too. I mean, te technically there is no hurt in making the pit just keep scaling. If you then want to play this, you are you're free to play this, right? So so I, I'm I'm completely with you. Like like there there could be endless pit for the pit enjoyers to give a challenge for people with way too much time the problem is so why do endless pits not exist so so why 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 don't they actually make this right why don't they make this because it gives how, how do I, how do i put this right now 
So if you have an endless pin, it makes the casual player, and I know this is a stupid argument, right? Listen, um, it makes this casual player feel like that they can't finish the game. Because there's an ever-growing progression that they can't keep up with. And that's probably the only reason why this system doesn't exist, and it's a stupid reason. Because, you, like, as a casual player, you're probably going to stop at tier 100 pit anyways, if you even get here. I mean, right, as a casual player, you're going to cap out here or here anyways, right? So so that's the, that's the thing. You, you're going to cap out there. Done. So, so like, it, it doesn't, it, it's unreasonable to not just make an endless pit, kind of, right? From pit 100 to 200, there is zero loot difference and the enemies are still 199. Yes. So this is, this is a thing. Uh, 16 higher pit tiers don't give you better loot, more uniques, uh, higher chance for greater affixes. Sad. So I want higher pit tiers to give you better loot. Yes. I mean, if you if you manage to get to a tier 200 pit and the loot is exactly the same as tier 100 pit, which it is, I tested it. Um, that's, that's sad. I mean, someone in chat tried to convince me yesterday that tier 200 pit is giving so much better loot. It's, it's a joke. It doesn't. We can grind uh, like crazy to make an insane build with no purpose. Well, your purpose is right now to, to beat the pit. To beat all the tormented bosses once. And then you're done. I mean, right, right now, right now, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What's the gameplay loop? We we actually made a video on this because I wanted to make a video on it, right? Is this a, where, where's my where's my notepad? Where'd my notepad go? Um, so what's the gameplay loop look like? This is the Necromancer tier list, by the way. So what's the what's the new gameplay loop? Season four. So you're gonna level from one to one hundred. Do nightmare dungeons to get glyphs. Level twenty one. Uh, beat the pit, one to two hundred. Uh, kill every tormented boss. Farm the boss ladder as much as you feel. But beat the seasonal mechanic, whatever it is. Uh, participate. Participate in the gauntlet leaderboard. That's, that's, that's what you do in Diablo, currently. It's like they gave you more content, but not really better content. Mm, I think this is enough. Like, so let's say the one, one to 100 is currently 10 to 15 hours, right? Do Nightmare Dungeons to get that is like five hours, roughly. Then you have the beat the pit to level 100. It's everything from 10 to 20 hours. Kill every tormented boss. If you're farming this yourself, it's another 10 hours, roughly. 10 hours is maybe overdone a bit because like you can get the steel in one hour, but some of the materials are actually like, let's say, let's say five to 10 hours. So that's kind of like what you, what you could do. I mean, considering you get the there from the boss ladder as much as you want. I mean, some people put insane hours in here. So this is also five to 10 hours. Beat the seasonal mechanic. It's usually relatively easy. I mean, the seasonal mechanic last time, well, actually that, that was another five to 10 hours. So this would be kind of like the, and, and then gauntlet that's every week, you're going to invest a couple, but this is, this could be like what, five hours per week. So what would you, what would you have at max? You're like 15, 20, 40. 50, 60, 70 hours per, per, per season to play. It's okay. So one problem we have is that the Diablo 4 devs believe that Diablo is not a game to be played endlessly. Chat, listen. This is something that the Diablo 4 devs said ex explicitly. 
said when you're done, you might stop play for the season and return when there's another patch to just take a break and then come back. I mean, it, it literally was like, I think during season one or season two, I think it was during season one, they're, they're, during a campfire chat somewhere, it was explicitly stated by the devs. They don't believe that, that essentially Diablo 4 is a game to play nonstop. So you play, you do this, you do the things, like you do the things I said, right? You do this, this is like for one class, for one class, right? And then you could do the same thing, right? <clears throat> Re reasonably, um, like, let's say, let's say this would be 70 hours or 60 hours, okay? This would be 60 hours total. 60 hours total is how many weeks for you guys? I mean, for, for me as a, for me as the streamer, I, I play roughly 30 hours. Actual gameplay is 30 hours per week. So this would be for me two weeks gameplay for Necro. Currently with 60 hours total, I roughly play like six hours, sometimes less. So more like five hours per day out of actual gameplay. Uh, when I don't like talk, sit, uh, idle, whatever. Um, so that would even only be like, uh, You play two to three hours a day with a full-time job and happy girlfriend. I mean, like, see if you say three hours per day with like seven days a week, that's still three weeks of gameplay with one class. That's, that's decent for a season. Yeah, you can like, this is, this is, again, this is the basic, right? With Dragon, this is not you finding new builds, master working, tempering. I mean, wait, so something that's actually missing in this list, sorry. Um... Hunt for greater affix uniques items to perfect your build. That is technically endless. I mean, why ever you would do this? Okay, listen, why ever you would do that? But technically, this is an endless activity. If you want to make the perfect build, I mean, again, if you want to see like, like right now, if I want to make the perfect summoner build, I would have to find a greater affix on Skeletal Mage Mastery. I haven't found anyone. So I've played I've played over 10 hours the last two days, and I have not found a single greater affix on Skeletal Mage Mastery. So that is 10 hours invested, and I've not gotten what I'm looking for. Right? But but real realistically, this is the gameplay loop. This is what we have at this point. Uh, and we don't even know what the seasonal mechanic is, right? The seasonal mechanic could be amazing. It could be it could be shit. <laughs> we don't know. Last I mean, in season two, we got the Abattoir of Zur, right? We got the Abattoir of Zur. And that was technically an endless activity to a degree. I mean, some people put 100 or 200 hours in there, correct? But this is the new gameplay loop. This is what you can expect from Diablo 4 now. And if you look at this and you're like, this is shit and I don't like it, then that's okay. What, what can I say? If, if this is not enough for you and you don't like this and this is, this is not what you enjoy doing, play a different game. Because it won't change, right? This this is like this is the expected gameplay loop. This is what's gonna happen. This is how the future of Diablo looks like for now. And if that's not to your liking, then move. <laughs> move on. That's it. Season four stuff is not included, exactly. But still, even if the season four stuff comes, the season four stuff is usually I mean, how much how much time was last season? How much time was season three in order to get every single stone in order to get, well, let's ignore the two unique stones. Okay. In order to get every single stone and your companion maxed out, it's like 10 hours, right? I mean, you were leveling to 100, you were getting all the stones and then you had everything level 20, 15, 20. I forgot how many levels I had every 10, every, everything level 10. Okay. I mean, I like, how long did I take for the unique, uh, like how, how long did I take for the unique list for the seasonal mechanic? Uh, the unique glyphs took me around 15 hours to farm. 
that wasn't fun farm. That was not farm I enjoyed. That was farm I hated. 60 hour per season is not enough playtime for an ARPG. Well, you're saying that, but this is 60 hour playtime for the basics. This is the basics, Wizim. This is not playing a second class. This is not farming for greater uniques, items, affixes. I mean, this is like, if you're into this game and if you're actually enjoying the game, you can spend endless time getting you the right items for your build. What I would like to have is, I would like to have a Nightmare Dungeon Sigil boost. So right now, a tier 100 Nightmare Dungeon is quite easy. Why can I not acquire an item to give myself a 150 Nightmare Dungeon for a bonus challenge? Right? So I, I, take, I take a Nightmare Sigil and then I corrupt it. And I do a corrupted Nightmare Dungeon. for a bonus challenge. There is ways to definitely make bonus challenge in the game. If the bonus challenge is reasonable. I mean, if I do a corrupted nightmare dungeon uh, and it has a higher unique drop rate, higher uber unique drop rate, it gives way more glyph XP, that would be great. Yeah. I mean, if in that corrupted dungeon, the end boss is a, a boss ladder boss. <laughs> You know, you go into a corrupted dungeon. It's a level 200. And at the end of the corrupted dungeon, you, you'll find a tormented boss with a bit lesser loot, but still one of the tormented bosses. I would love that. It would be so much fun. Right? That would be cool. There is ways to definitely make content for the higher gamers. I don't expect it. Again, I don't expect harder gear. Also, the problem right now is we don't need to farm better gear because everything is easy. See, like, I don't agree that everything is easy because people are shit. Sorry, Chan. I know, I know you're all absolute hung. Amazing. Like studs. You're, you're like, you're, you're rippling like 120 kilogram like Arnold Schwarzeneggers in front of the PC. And obviously the 200 levels of the pit was like child's play, right? Like we beat the shit out of that. The thing is, people suck. I mean, like, I think over 50% of the player base has not beaten a tier 100 dungeon. Magic, steel. I've seen at, at least over 50% of the player base hasn't beaten a tier 100 dungeon. At least, like, over 50% of the player base doesn't even know that their armor cap is. Correct? I mean, there, there, like, there's tons of people who still don't know that you can turn Paragon boards. So... <laughs> Yeah, I just this morning had a YouTube comment about that. I mean, most, most people in this game suck ass and the game is made for these people. That's it. Right? I mean, the, the super hardcore all-in player base is probably even less than 5%. Even less than 5%. Yeah, but 80 to 90% haven't done it tier 100. I want it to be fair. So I said 50% because I didn't want to trash the player base too much. But the re reality is it's, it's more towards the 100. I like to the 90% haven't even done a tier 100. And that's the thing. Like we were, It would be nice to have something for the 5%. But it's kind of unreasonable to expect it. As, as hard, like as, uh, yeah, it's stupid. I, I think it sucks for me too. Um, I'm, I'm not I'm not happy as well that there's no challenge in the game. Well, I'm, I'm not happy there's no challenge in the game, but I'm not not enjoying the game. I'm still having fun, right? Uh, if I want to challenge myself, I'll I'll like uh, try to talk to my daughter while she's watching TV. That's that's a harder challenge than actually like doing anything in this game, right? Um, but yeah, I mean like, I guess if you want to challenge, you play a different game at this point. Uh, you you play Diablo to cruise through, to enjoy, to have fun, to make a powerful character, to make a build work out, to solve the puzzle of what will be good this season, to kind of like just enjoy the seasonal mechanic. But if you're looking for an actual challenge, like real gameplay challenge challenge.
right? So that that's like it's the reality of things. We will probably get harder content. I mean, <laughs> the problem is the hard which which harder content do we get, Sean? Which harder content do we get? Two things. We technically got the gauntlet. Okay, so so you did get the gauntlet. It's not here right now, but we have the gauntlet. And there's another thing we have. We we do we do have Harker mode. And they took away the cheat death elixir. So if you truly want a challenge. Then you then you play hardcore. Even though I don't think this is actually a challenge, it's just stupid. Sorry, I don't find hardcore challenging because I just play like a pussy. <laughs> I mean, sorry, like get, getting a character to 100 in hardcore isn't hard. You just have to play like a pussy for 100 levels and that's it. Done. But technically, technically, if you want to have a challenge, hardcore is an option. Which is not the challenge people are looking for. People are looking just for, for actually something that's hard, right? And not to lose your character when you die. The issues that streamers paint a picture of issues that casuals never face depends on the content creator, Zurin. I do agree there is some content creators like the absolute hardcore diehard ARPG folks that are the 1% themselves that have no absolute fucking clue what the casual want. But that's not every creator. But yes, there are definitely creators that are just completely useless in their opinion. If you want to clear all 70 hour content on an HC char, it will probably take twice the time. Exactly, email. But it's stressful. See, the thing is, people want a challenge. Like, th this is why hardcore is not a challenge. Hardcore is making gaming more stressful it's not a challenge it's just it's just getting you to the point where death might mean permanent loss and that that's stre that's stressful to a degree and a challenge doesn't have to be stressful right a challenge is just literally i go in there with my character and i try to beat it and if i don't beat it that's okay then i'll try again right and and that's like the thing with hardcore actually like I don't play hardcore because it doesn't feel challenging for me, but it adds a bonus layer of stress that's not challenged. That's just ruining the fun for many because people are playing games to relax. You know, life is not a challenge. It's just stress. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> why, why are you saying that? It's true. Life's just stress. Jesus. makes me play better because there's a penalty to fuck up is not stressful for you for you tattler for you you know that's the thing a lot of people can't play an arpg without a consequence and that's okay but but you do need to understand that you're the outlier right nice t-shirt by the way thank you i'll tell my wife that i got a lot of compliments for the t-shirt because she doesn't like it but i like it when playing deform release, softcore was boring. When hardcore and just rolled the tanky char was also boring in the end. A lot of people find Diablo boring and that's okay. A lot of people find Diablo boring and that that's okay. But, but a lot of people also need to move on. I think we got a very good gameplay loop in front of us that I'm happy about. Uh, I would enjoy an endless challenge. So if there was any kind of endless challenge, if there was a kind of horde mode, I mean, I, I personally would enjoy a horde mode. So not like a 200 pit where I fight through a dungeon, more like more like a roguelike horde mode experience. We actually had something like that in Diablo Immortal. I know you might not want to hear this, guys, but Diablo Immortal is pretty fucking fire. So there is a there's a somewhat kind of horde mode in there, which is really, really cool. But yeah, that that uh, any kind of endless content would be good, you know. By the way, let's let's we we have our feedback list here, correct? So this is our feedback list right now: sixteen points and another eight points for Necro. We're number eight. We're actually gonna delete. But what what does the PDR forum now say, Chad? What's the what's the PDR forum saying? Let's let's see what what freaks people out. Okay, 
So this is the PDR feedback currently to, to keep up the PDR till it's live. Veil crystals are fine. No change needed. I hope that's a joke, right? I have zero issues with veil crystals. Not sure what else the fuss about. Hope we keep game integrity, not soy mode with the entire Diablo franchise. Cool. So someone, someone that has too much time and clearly didn't understand the point. What's with weapon tempering recipes? Because it's so powerful, should we make it that only take effect on the weapon you currently use? If not, it will make advantage to Barb and Rogue. Yeah, I mean, Rogues and Barbs anyways have insane advantage, sir. You're right about that. Uh, that brings me to the point, by the way. Um, this is something important. Uh, temper recipe drop rate. Um, temper recipe drop rate is too damn low will reach level 100 and not have every single temper recipe which i personally find bad because i feel like if i get to 100 if i get to 100 i want to have every temper recipe i don't want to like because on 100 right when you're level 100 you're supposed to be able to temper any piece of gear you feel like, right? But if I reach 100 and I can't even start making my build, because technically from level, from level, so, so you, this sounds a bit crazy guys, but I cleared a tier 41 dungeon, actually a 43 dungeon with my level 62 character. Okay. 62 character, tier 42 dungeon. That means I'm getting 925 gear already. But if I ha don't have the temper recipes, what does the 925 gear use me? So I, I, personally, I personally feel like the temper recipe drop rate should be a bit higher. If you actually tried leveling, you might notice this as well. Because I'm level 62 and I dropped like four temper recipes or five. Yeah. So, so that that's definitely something to, that we would like to like to have more. Let's let's see what the PDR has more. I'm 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 a fan to check the PDR. We have rune charge just won't drop. Yeah, rune charge is that damage is too high. Damage is too high in my opinion. Doing billions of damage is way too high. One of the reasons why I stopped playing D3, even though they shortened the visuals from 10 to 10 billion, still unnecessary. I like seeing damage numbers on my screen, just not billions. I mean, this is only a problem for barbarians. Let's be fair, right? I've never seen a billion with a necro. Uh, I, <clears throat> this is this is a non-issue that exists because overtuned classes, right? The perma immune sorks needs to be adjusted. Yeah, I heard that too. Like like sork cannot die, correct? With perma flame shield. I'm not using ad blocker, by the way. We have flame shield, right? Oh, it's only for ADP difficulty. Oh, that's really permanent. Wow, Jesus Christ. I mean, if you look at that down there, here, this is the cooldown for Flame Shield. It's just instant. Oh, that's kind of nice. But yeah, it seems a bit silly. <laughs> it seems a bit... Uh, Makuna example from a tier 200 pit, Wayne. Oh, he's only doing... Only doing Firebolt and that. <gasps> See, this is why I don't think that minions are overpowered. You know? <laughs> By the way, I'm okay with a build like this existing, right? If it's not a bug. I'm completely fine with a build like this existing. If you have like absolutely like end game gear and you can make this work, like I don't give a, I don't give a flying farin. I mean, you don't have to play like this, right? Yeah, if other if, if other classes can do stuff like this, minions are fine. Exactly. Like I I'm fine. If this is if this is what Sword can do, I'm 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 completely okay with this. I mean, again, if it's not a bug, then it's fine. If it's a bug, then obviously fix it, right? That's the reality of things. Bugs shouldn't exist. What do we have? Wasn't Rogue supposed to be a glass cannon a class? It feels like a glass water pistol. <laughs> uh, what is second? 
from grace don't do s and poe at a chance of success to master working this story is despicable for small playtime we can never be 12 12 master working at 6 12 i only have a fit yeah yeah so so the sir sir is correct right master work failure what do we have here this is also remove the fail chance so so that that's a general sentiment right people don't want to have this uh suggestion to prevent power leveling and quality of life improvements the parent with the nerve of that the intent will be for people to use hell tides to level however with the way hell tides are now set up with the rage meter are the cursed altar this is ripe for abuse from streamers they could ask people to join their game to summon high xp content non-stop it would be very easy to do well this is an absolute no issue I like it's it's interesting that he's concerned about streamers power leveling where streamers are like 0.0001% of the player base so i mean what's your problem if someone wants to play the game like that and and use the game mechanics well i, I don't understand this but i would never power level like that so right it makes no sense Suggestion on pit rewards. Surprise me. Please drastically decrease Masterwork Matt's reward, but greatly increase Legendary Gear Drop. Yep, you could do that for sure. Or actually make it better gear. Yeah, power level is nothing wrong with, right? I mean, this is kind of like, this is such a non-issue because if 0.001% of the player base decides to power level, what's, what's your problem? Kind of, you know? What do you feel is the best balance for the casuals and the 1% ultimately? Well, the best balance between casual and 1% is that the 1% gets nothing and the casuals get everything. And that's kind of like how it is. <laughs> and I'm sorry. Leveling from 1 to 50 feels extremely easy. Yes, it does. But that's just, I, I don't think this will change. I don't know if you've actually tried to level from 1 to 50, guys. But the thing is that a lot of the items right now are OP OP. So the cool thing about leveling currently is that every item is useful. Right? Every every item is actually useful. Because, like, you have this. This is 600 max life and 101 life per second. Fucking fire. 600 max life, skeletal mastery. Great. Uh, intelligence, bone spirit. Well, the bone spirit is shit, right? But life per second and impairment reduction. So this is the first sad item. Correct? But usually, you find, an, you find only useful items at this point, which is kind of good. Most uniques can't compete with tempering. Yep, that's true. So it just feels bad playing Rogue now and watching now all unique weapons being so bad compared with how good the tempering FX is. So uniques are practically useless. That's true. Tempering durability, what does, what does the man want? Uh, durability is fine, but would be more interesting if that would be also changing on the items. So if an ancestral legendary can have a temper and durability between 5 and 10, it's decided on the drop. Yes, I, I, would, I would like that. Chat, what do you think? So I was saying increase temper durability in general. Here, uh, I was saying two or three more temper durability or random value of 5 to 10, right? So I think it would be nice to either have more or just get a random value so you could be happy. Because if an item drops with a 10, 10 temper durability, you would be happy. If you drop an item with a 5, you'd be like, ah, this is a bad item, right? So, so it's kind of like it would add a bit more loot excitement. I think temper durability should exist because you should be able to break an item. Because if you can just endlessly roll, I think that's bad. Being able to break an item is okay. Because, I mean, getting good items is quite easy. The only hard feeling is maybe, maybe um, here, wait a second. Uh, you could say uh, greater affix items always 10 temper. This this would go a long way because greater item like greater affix items so so if you have an item with greater affixes on it, it they feel triple bad if you break them right so if i have one with two or three well two or three greater affixes on um like like maybe here here so so greater Greater affix items always 10 temper. Two, two greater affix items always 10 temper. And three greater affix item 15 temper. Uh, maybe. D -d this is just a big maybe. But I kind of feel like that the greater affix items... If you if I break a three greater affix items, I'm going to stop playing for the season. <laughs> right? 
if you get an item with three greater greater affixes the perfect item that has all the things you need and you bring it to the temper and you would try to get the exact temper you're looking for and it wouldn't work i, I would probably i would probably quit the game what do you like bricking uh, it's a consequence of your actions scrumjack you know they like to add some consequence to your actions they like to add a certain risk factor a certain thrill of rolling like less temper durability and then you temper again i was like oh my god is it gonna work and then it works and you're like Arr! so yeah they they want to introduce some risk which is it's okay it's just what's gonna stay there right What do we have in the PDR? What's going on? Uh, the irony of unique and rare items. Yeah, we don't have to talk about that. Master working and tempering. What do you have, sir? Uh, the animation is too long. Yes, master working failing is annoying and causes us to sit. Yes, this is true. Some way to reset tempering potential on an item would be nice. <sighs> Interesting point. But also kind of like... I mean, you could... like so. So this was the suggestion someone like made there reset temper durability maybe for matt's gold so if there was a way to reset temper durability i mean you could make it a pit item hey hey chad chad listen pit loot so what if the pit drops loot a vial that could reset temper durability so you could temper more Uh, PoE also does it fine. Corrupting an item is optional, but it's pretty much the only way to 100% brick an item. I, I don't know that mechanic, but you could technically reset the temper durability. I mean, this would be an option to to appease the bricking folks. Um, maybe Matt's gold item dropped in the pit. So could be could be a thing. I, I wouldn't be averse to this. I mean, like we have the reset masterwork button. Uh, which is free. So resetting a masterwork is free, right? Done. And actually, it's it's, it's not free. It actually does cost. Does, did it cost reason? No, it was for free. So you can reset a masterwork, but you can't reset a temper. So either make it a reset a temper or make it a reset the temper for um for material. So it could be a thing. Like actually, I actually like I like the point that he brings up. It's fine. I'm I'm, I'm always willing to to change my opinion, right? Damage report after boss fight. Oh yeah, thank you for reminding me. Uh, we need a a damage log, damage log, or a death screen summary. What killed you and why? Right. So I either want a damage log that completely shows me everything, or at least a summary death screen that tells me why I died. The unbreaking thing is a like potion like in season two. Correct. Zozo, that's actually what we're talking about. So reset temper durability is kind of like the season two potion where you, uh, the cleansing acid, where you wipe the thing clean. A DPS meter. I mean, DPS meter is optional. I don't really need this. It, I wouldn't hurt. You are 20. DPS meter for the target dummies. So you could actually test some things. So that, that's a minimal thing, but that's a thing I do want like forever already. Personal personal thing I do want forever already. Um, minor pit suggestion. He says minor, but it's probably like rework the game. <laughs> I like when people write that and they're like, can we place the level and completion time in the chat box at the end of the pit run, please? Sure. To kind of like see how fast you have been. I kind of like that, to be honest. Master working suggestion, pressure feedback, codex with legendary powers. I'm not sure if it is intended, but when I destroy a legendary item, you indeed see the aspect in the codex. But if I get out of the current game and then come back, it resets the minimum stat for the aspect. Oh yeah, well that's broken. That's a bug. Oh, perma immune sork. We have we have two posts about the perma immune sork, Chad. Two posts about it. Oh. Uh... Please extend the PDR. We have that. Pit new endgame content. I'm really loving the pit. Finally, endgame content, just like Greater Rifts, where you just kill enemies in no time, wasted looting, taking bloodstones, freeing. The only disappointing thing is the loot in the end is really insufficient. Yes. 
I mean, the pit used needs to drop more greater affix with higher difficulty. Tempering manuals, uber boss materials are bound. Uh, PDR, elemental surge. Nothing, nothing. Pinnacle boss fight suggestions. What, what do you have? It's Pinnacle, by the way. That, that's definitely written by a German. Well, having the new 200 version of the boss is great, but I have to put this on a way. As an example, Gregor requires five living steel and 200 requires 25, which is stupid, right? Uh, so with 10 and one, get a tier uh, 125. No, no, no. You do, do need the 200 version straight away, but for way less. But he's, he's at least trying to bring something down, but they're not going to make multiple tiers, right? When salvaging legendaries, it would be good to have an indication if one equipped legendary power can be upgraded. Uh, it actually does same. Uh, when you're salvaging here, when you're here at the salvager. Um, it does say in terms of the symbol, this one upgrades and this one upgrades. So right now, this vampire curse item and this uh, blood mist, uh, these two are each better than the ones I have in my codex right now. If, if that was what you're asking for, I'm sorry. Maybe I misunderstood the question. What are we doing today, fireman? Well, we beat the 200 pit and currently we're taking um, where we're talking about feedback. With the increase of veil crystal cost and new itemization, how much would 30k crystals allow me to roll uh, and master work? 30k crystals will go a long way, DPS glitch. But again, the cost going down. It would be good to have an indication. Oh, oh, so so you mean like if if you have an if you have an item equipped, it would be good to see if actually like so right now my bone storm is four percent, and if I salvage an item, it would be like if uh, good if it actually says that the bone storm is upgraded. Well, I mean, on the like on the one hand, sure, but on the other hand, like I guess you you gotta you gotta like pay fucking attention. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe you get to pay goddamn attention and see what you're actually salvaging. But end of the day, if you brick it, it actually tells you, right? It's, I mean, here here it says uh, blood-soaked aspect has been upgraded, and here it says metamorphosis has been upgraded. So technically, you get the pop-up on the left side, even if you're mass salvaging. I mean, if I salvage like uh, like a bunch of items here, then then it kind of. Shit, I'm, none of this is better. But yeah, it just mass pops up, right? So, uh, did they say how much is going down? No. Uh, they said they're working on the Veil Crystal cost already. There was some post or in some stream they said it, but the Veil Crystal cost is obviously ludicrous and we don't we don't have to talk about that. It's, it's a fact that it's ludicrous and that it needs to be reworked. So yeah. That 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 indeed needs to be worked on. Uh, what do we have? Feedback, feedback, barbarian, barbarian. No, nah, I think we're fine. This is like, and I'm I'm not sure if I do have more points that I desperately need to bring up. I mean, this is already an extensive list on general things that we'd like to see fixed. Oh yeah, I I want I want re-rolling affixes to be three choices. So this is a this is a hill I'll eventually die on, Chad. But I still feel like when you're actually re-rolling that you choose one out of three, correct? It would be great to also have a one out of three choice. A lot of the problems with re-rolling is just down to, like, I want to see a Skeletal Mage Mastery, and I can re-roll 40 times and never see it. No, five choices is too much. You have three affixes, three choices would be good. I mean, there still needs to be the matter of RNG. There still needs to be the matter of struggle. Just that with two choices, I mean, you have, like, what? you have, And, and so the problem, the, the biggest problem I see is that it completely seems to be not random. I mean, I can reroll 20 times and 20 times in a row, I see maximum life, armor, and thorns. So only these three. I, I literally don't see a single other one. I, I don't know if you've ever noticed it when you reroll, right? I don't have the resources to reroll, so I can't show you. But you often reroll and and like you see literally like four affixes, f only four, and they keep, they keep rotating, correct? They, they keep rotating. 
and and like you never see anything of the others like like until you you have to essentially reroll 20 times before you see one of these and then it's the wrong one but yeah i feel like if you could see if you could see three it would be better weighted random there's some weighted random or there's some algorithm they don't tell us about behind it but it's definitely it's definitely not completely random chat right there, there's a level of randomness that that's not there there's a priority exactly and it's weird and i i wish it wasn't like that because because how so if we had three affixes that would definitely be better and would make me happier so rerolling affixes, uh, like to be three choices, that would be good. But apart from that, I mean, I'm happy with Necromanza. I mean, still, I'll die on this hill. Necromanza needs a real defensive skill, like bone, bone armor, or blood veil, or whatever, whatever, right? We, we need any kind of defensive skill that gives us barrier, that gives us any kind of damage reduction that makes Necromancer stay alive. A movement skill. Well, I mean, te technically, Blood Mist is a movement skill now because they, they, they took away the movement speed penalty. It's actually really cool, I have to say. Like right now, when you use Blood Mist, you're not getting slower and you can zoom. And that's pretty good. Correct? So technically we have a movement skill. But yeah, Mendeln rework. I mean, Mendeln is perfect in the Mendeln rework, but obviously the maximum minion life needs to go. So a lot of uniques need to be reworked because they have useless stats. Yes. A lot of uniques have complete useless stats and a lot of uniques don't live up to the altered reality. I mean, this one gives, for example, 21% bone critical strike damage. And my gloves give me basically 50% critical strike damage out of the house. Can't be. Uh, the thing is, if you compare Eben Piercer, for example, Eben Piercer to a base here. This, this one is the comparison. So this one is a base essence cost reduction of 14%. Eben Piercer has 17%. Why? Why does why, why is Eben Piercer already having a higher essence cost reduction by by nature than the other item? And it's kind of like because Eben Piercer was just balanced towards the other affixes. So Eben Piercer is just naturally stronger than any other unique because it's new. Uh, the same actually goes with Ixfels. Ixfels is also one of the newer ones that's generally stronger than the others for no goddamn reason. Uh, also, we want all stats back, right? Because they actually promise us all stats. So uh, we bring all stats back to items having intelligence is nice being able having intelligence slash main stat is nice but choice choice for paragon is better because right now my problem is i have like this intelligence i have intelligence i have intelligence right i don't need this amount of intelligence what i need is i need all stats on some items to make my paragon boards work but not only that the biggest problem is that even if i even if i go even if i avoid any single intelligence note okay listen so even if i enjoy every like even if i try to avoid every intelligence note which i do like i i did try right i did try to take willpower where i could crit where i could i'd like like try to avoid as much intelligence as possible you can't like there's there's like there's intelligence everywhere right you like i have been trying to get this up 466 decks is kind of like the max i can do but then i can't do the willpower correct uh then i can't get the willpower up here so it, it's literally impossible but this would already get fixed with like if, if you have all stats of like this is 185 intelligence if i now had an all stats of 80 or or 60 or 70 that would go a, a long way Right? So that, that's definitely a thing where I'm saying bring back all stats because they actually promised us that. This is, this is weird. They said in the fireside chat that whenever you drop an item, it is either going to have intelligence on it as a necromancer or strength as a barbarian. But they said it's possible to get int or all stats. 
they said I can't get dex anymore, which is great. I don't want an item with dex on it. I want int or all stats. Right? That would be, that'd be a good thing. It's surprisingly that I don't have that many complaints about necromancer in general. Right, like, right now, I have one point. Um, Golem should give 30 x critical strike damage if he is alive. Iron or Bone Golem instead of sacrifice bonus. Because at this point, the golem is still too good to sacrifice, right? Like, like the, the golem is just... This 30x multiplier is so good that it just makes no sense to not sacrifice the golem. Still. No, no matter what the golem does, right? No matter how many millions of damage the golem does. It's just so much better to still sacrifice him. And that's kind of like not what it should be. Uh, and they, they kind of fixed this issue by giving us skeletal mages that actually give us a damage multiplier, right? Because currently you could choose to deal 15% increased damage to vulnerable enemies, correct? Or you could choose to have five mages and a 15% damage increase. W what would you rather choose, guys? Just 15% more damage? Or 15% or, or more damage, but you have 15 and, and mages, right? 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 But yeah, so that 30%, that like being the golem on sacrifice just doesn't feel good. Mm. Just, just my humble thought here. By the way, thank you for so many people actually staying for this feedback stream so far. That's, that's actually really appreciated. And in case you missed it, we beat the 200 pit multiple times so you can go back in the VOD. We have absolutely demolished the pit today with our minion builds and it felt extremely good. It was uh, quite fun and pretty, pretty, pretty interesting, right? But you, you could reduce the skill requirement of Paragon nodes, as you say, but I kind of think that would break the whole system. So right now, I feel like the problem would be solved with all stats. I mean, I'm, I'm literally just missing willpower here. I'm, I'm missing some willpower there. I'm generally missing like some dexterity, right? And if I would have an all, one single item with all stats would already fix my Paragon board. At least as the Necro, I don't know how the other classes are doing right now. Correct? So this is definitely what I would probably wrap up in a video. What materials do you give us to open pit? Uh, the, the pit is being opened by rune shards. And the rune shards are available to get acquired. Rune shards drop in Helltide. Rune shards drop from Whispers. Uh, rune shard drops from Legion events. So rune shards are essentially dropping everywhere. Okay. Rune shards are literally, they're easy to come by. They just don't drop here. It says the ancient token used by the Hora dream, Hora dream, Hora dream, however you pronounce it, often found in whisper bounties, Helltide and Legion chests and nightmare dungeons. Done. It even says on the rune shards. The problem is they just don't drop. Correct? Horadrim? Horadrim. Okay. We have all rest signing. Uh, you can just get all rest on your pants and master work down. So, so in case you missed it, there is actually all rest. You can roll this on pants and boots here. Uh, resistance to all elements, 10%. If you master work this, it goes up to 20. Roughly. And you can roll this on boots too. So technically resistance is really easy to come by, especially if you get a master work. It's kind of like sad. Uh, it's actually simple. Um, Gulam should give that. I had something I just thought of mine as we're talking about things. Pit, pit, rune shards, things. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm gonna write it on the list because we made it in the video. Tor tormented bosses summoning materials are too damn high, at, especially for solo players. And loot is not worth it compared to summoning five individual bosses. So that's the thing, like, right? Compared to that. And if you pay for Blood Surge, Blood Surge is like just 
terrible in the pit because you're fighting monsters with too much HP while you need to stay healthy. Fireman. So the problem with Blood Surge is not in Blood Surge itself. It's what the content Blood Surge is doing. Blood Surge can completely destroy tier 100 dungeons still. Well. Will absolutely murder in. But Blood Surge will always struggle in the pit as Blood Surge struggled in the Abba 12 Zero. But that's down to the content, to the actual content. Right? I mean, Blood Surge is great in the gauntlet, but it's simply not good for the other content. By the way, I can't wait to actually use Summoner Necro in the gauntlet next season to get a top X spot. Summoner Necro for life, ladies and gentlemen. Doing very good. Daryl needs her own loot pool. But that would make her a must loot. Forge Patriarch. Uh, right now, you can choose to either do Daryl or Duriel. To technically farm Ubers. Um, if she had her own loot pool, you need to farm Daryl and Duriel. Are Blood Nova and Minions good now? Uh, Blood Nova and Minions can beat a tier 100. But it's not easy. Okay. So yes, Blood Nova and Minions can beat a tier 100. Yes, you can take the uh, Amulet. But it just it, it, it doesn't feel good. It, it, it's not it's not incredible. It's not crazy. Like the Death Speaker's Pendant is fun. It works. Yes, you can do it. Uh, but it's not a 10 out of 10 game experience and you don't feel ultra powerful. It's more like it works with crutches, but it, it's not smooth sailing. Smooth sailing is right now Shadow, Pure Summoner. And well, the Bone Summoner was good, but not good enough. It was fun, though, like I have to say. Right now, actually focusing on, on like your full year minions or the shadow minions. It's quite nice. I don't know which one I like more. I mean, both were quite fun to play. Mm, maybe the pure summons because I actually do enjoy spamming my army of the dead. Probably. Do you have a planner for summoner shadow? We have a couple of videos for you already with planners and everything. So if you missed it, uh, this is currently the YouTube channel. How to YouTube. So this is the full Shadow Necro. This is the um, this is the Summoner, the Shadow Summoner. Uh, that is the uh, this one is here the Bone God. This actually got changed. So this Bone God is not playing Blood Mist right now, but it's playing Blood Mist currently. So that one got changed. Yeah. <coughs> What's the problem with bone minions? Not enough damage. Well, luckily we're currently playing bone minions. So this is currently the bone minion build. It is a combination of not enough damage and currently for me, a barrier issue, right? Uh, the armory they're working on, but it doesn't make sense to write that as feedback because we all know that we want it. They know we want it, but they are literally saying they can't do it right now. So this is bone minions right now. So we're sparring the bone spear. We're making our bone dudes, right? Like it's really, really cool. We're like really, really powerful. We have them all locked up. The bone dudes are throwing out like bones and we're making bones and there's bone spears and the bone spears are actually doing damage and the bone spears are copying the the things and then they're doing more damage and then bone spears and then bone spears and then more bone spears and the cooldown reduction and bone spears and your minions actually don't die and then more bone spears and the bone spears are bone spearing and then the dudes are still alive, right? <laughs> So like we it's an actual really really good build that works for tier 100 dungeons so actual tier 100 dungeons right but honestly for the tier 100 kids um yes it works and the amount of shebang you're getting is is cool and fun but honestly like it's it's not to a point where i would say this is this is like this is good right so so it kind of it kind of does work it kind of kills also tormented bosses and it kills uber bosses and that kind of stuff but honestly the the damage is Way lower than the shadow build and the damage is way lower than the actual bone god build we tried it we wanted it to work and it's it's the, the idea is amazing i mean you have the deathless visage and then you have your skeleton mages to cast twice and to cast twice and then you also have your skeleton mages to do the bone spear <sighs> but yeah what i do believe personally is that some of the temper manuals need to be split up because some things don't really make much sense to me. Like you have the Shadow Finesse and the Shadow Finesse has Corpse Explosion damage. Why? I mean, Shadow Finesse has Shadow damage over time, Darkness damage, Desecrated Ground and Corpse Explosion. What? 
Then you have the summoning finesse, which is actually summoning damage scale to mage damage, golem damage, fine. Bone finesse, which is bone damage, bone critical strike, bone critical strike. So that makes sense too. <laughs> Profane <laughs> finesse, which is curse, 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 and then corpse tendril damage. Vittle, thank you for the 66 months of subscriptions. Vittle appreciation. Very good to see you there. Hope you're doing well. So that, 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 what, what? Why? And then you have the blood finesse, right? Which has blood, 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 and then damage while fortified. Huh? Sure, damage while fortified because blood fortifies, but still, it kind of feels like that the damage while fortified should be somewhere else. It feels like the corpse explosion should be somewhere else, correct? Uh, that it, that it, like, the same is for, for defense. So this is a defensive tempering, right? It gives you blight slow potency, Corpse Tunnel Duration, Corpse Tunnel Size, makes sense. And then it gives you one to two ranks in Crippling Darkness. Crippling Darkness is currently Stun and Damage. That, that's a utility skill. Chat, listen, right? This is a utility skill. Getting Stun and a bit of Damage, the utility skill. This is not a defensive skill. Why is this under Defensive Tempering? Blood Endurance. Chance for hemorrhage to make a blood orb cool, blood orb healing cool, blood mist duration, oh, okay, and blood mist cooldown. The blood mist duration and the blood mist cooldown are not defensive. They're both utility. Because utility right now is corpse tendril explosion, size, 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 and curse duration. It's actually five. There's five things in here. Why is there five things in here? There's three curse things, right? Iron maiden size, decrepify size, and curse duration. These are three curse things. So why are these three cursed things not alone? And then corpse explosion size, corpse tendril size, and whatever. So there, there's quite some of the temperings that are wrapped together in a package. Especially, this is two. This is two. Chance for sever to cast twice and reap duration. Then you have the bone augments and it's four. what and then you have the shadow augments which is three again and the blood augments which is three and the summoning augments was three and the elemental search well which is six but that's different right but but this is unfair i can get sever tempering super easy but if i want the bone spear tempering what the fuck huh so I guess we could like we could write this under uh some tempering recipes are two, some are three, some are up to five options. This this is this is like this makes no sense because I think the frustration with tempering comes often from these things, right? I mean if, if there's if there's like such a like I currently so I won corpse explosion damage. Okay. I'm I'm playing a physical corpse explosion damage build, chat. A physical corpse explosion build. I would need to go for shadow finesse. I would need to not get three of the things that suck to get one of the thing I need. Correct? I'm playing a summoning build. I don't care what I get. I get summoning damage, nice. I get skeletal mage damage, nice. I get golem damage. I don't play golem. Okay? So it's two out of three. That's great. This is one out of four. I go for bone finesse. Bone damage is good. Bone critical strike damage is good. The chance and the bone spear damage is bad. This is a 50-50. Right? So that would be fine. But some of them make no sense. I mean, here too. Blood damage, blood overpower damage. Sure. Blood attack speed. Maybe even. And damage while fortified makes no sense. But yeah. Uh... I, I guess I made my point clear, correct? So some some truly don't make any sense. Some do make some sense. I mean, this is ultimate reduction, ultimate reduction, ultimate reduction, and then wrap. See, see, okay, listen, listen, chat, right? <laughs> this is two. Ultimate cooldown reduction works for everyone. Golem active cooldown reduction works for everyone. It uh, works for golems. Then bone spirit cooldown reduction very specific, and then two ranks to rapid ossification, which is. Every 100 essence you spend reduce the cooldown of your bone skills by 0 0.5 seconds. Um, like, no one plays this skill. Like, no, 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 no matter, no matter what you play, even if you play a bone spirit build, you usually do not play this skill. No, no one ever plays this skill, ever. 
So, so why, why even make a temporary manual for rapid ossification? <sighs> yeah. Pain. Okay. There's a lot that needs to be moved around. Generally, I'm very happy though. And I think we're actually going to end today's stream with that too because I still need to make my tempering video and I need the servers for that to be live. So I'll be sitting down to make a temper video now and we'll be preparing our feedback video and the bone summoner for you probably. The many videos still to come in your direction. So thank you for coming and watching, lurking and chatting and hopefully having a good time. This was a great good stream and I had a wonderful one. And I hope to see you all tomorrow again. I am not sure what, what game we'll stream or play play so have an eye youtube for the live stream have an eye twitch for the live stream uh because it won't be diablo most likely okay so i i, I like pdr is over and i i don't want to play season three i'm done with season three so take care have a good one and i'll see you all very soon again